Copenhagen, where the Swaco Raiders are visiting the Copenhagen team of the Towers. Welcome to the post-game show here, where we have interviews with the head coach from Swaco Raiders, Shuan Fatah. We have the athletic director for the Danish Federation, Lars Carlsen, and last but not least, we got the Towers head coach, Peter Herbil. Enjoy. I'm here with Coach Shuan Fatah for the Swaco Raiders, just landed off the bus. And first of all, welcome to sunny Copenhagen. So now we, you guys just won the CEFL and the Towers won the NEFL. This is what we looked like as the first Super Bowl in European football. How's your take on that? Oh, that's exactly what it is. Uh, uh, we're very, very excited that it finally happened. It was supposed to be happened last year and it didn't. Uh, we're very happy to be part of it, and um, it's it's good for football. I think it's good for European football that we show some progress, and uh, that, that uh, if teams come together, that a lot of can be accomplished, and that's exactly why we're here. It was a long trip, it was a very exhausting trip, but you know what? It's all worth it for the cause of football. Perfect. What's your expectation for the Towers team today? What's your emphasis on beating the Towers today? I mean, we watch the Towers, and I have them on the radar for a while. I mean, they're not unknown for me, but I'm a, I'm a freak. I know a lot about football in Europe. They are a very good football team. They are very disciplined. They have a, they assembled a very nice uh, roster, and uh, we are aware that this is going to be a very, very tough game. Probably the toughest game this, that we had so far, and we're in week 15, and uh, we, so that says a lot about the, the Copenhagen Towers. Uh, we have lots of respect for them, and uh, we know this is going to be a dogfight, and, uh, but you know what, we don't want it any other way. Perfect. Another thing, I, I noticed that you switched your regular defense to a 3-4 front. Why, why is that? Uh, we were tinkering around with it last year already. Uh, that's just uh, that's just a little nod to the uh, spread offenses we see every week in the AFL. The game is very fast over there in Austria, and uh, you you can't really stick a lot long uh, with the old-fashioned 4-3 defense, which we played for a long time. And as uh, so we tinkered around with it, you have to be multiple on defense, and uh, that the reason was that we have to get speed on the field. Uh, you know, the old old-fashioned middle linebacker, the big guy in the middle, that's uh, that's outdated. Mm. You have people that can run from sideline to sideline and uh, that's what we're trying to do get athletes on the field and uh, most likely you have them on the defensive back and linebacker spot and that's the reason why we did it talking about players give me two offensive players to watch today and then do two defensive players to watch start with the offense uh, any team or on your team on my team yeah. oh, obviously that's not a secret Sean Shelton is uh, probably one of the best quarterbacks in Europe and then uh, obviously we have uh, 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 Sandro Platzkoma uh, Austrian product came through our junior program in my, in my humble opinion one of the best in Europe if not the best running back in Europe slash receiver uh, outstanding athlete and uh, I think those are the two guys we really really uh, think can make a difference in the game and on the defensive side of the ball for the Swaco Raiders? Obviously, uh, Fabian Zebia is uh, one of our inside linebackers. He's, uh, he just won the uh, MVP trophy for the CFL final. Uh, he's all over the field. And then, uh, yeah, there's a couple of other guys that are uh, very, very good. But I think Philip Margreiter, number 36, it's an outside linebacker. Uh, he's a veteran guy, and he really is like a captain for us. And uh, he's holding the team together in tough times, which will be today. So he's, uh, he's also a, a great guy for us to have. Perfect. Thank you very much and good luck with the game today. Thank you very much. I'm here with Lars Carlsen, the head football coach of the Danish national team and athletic director for the Danish Football Federation. And Lars, tell me, this is obviously an EFL and a CEFL meeting up for the first time ever. As we see it as a media group, we see this as the European Super Bowl number one. So the Super Final number one. Give me your, your thoughts on that. I can I can agree on that, especially moving forward for the future. We will uh, have number two next year. I've been around a long time, as some of you know. Mm -hmm. I've seen what's going on in Europe and uh, ups and downs. And uh, this is uh, for me a historic moment. Like a reborn European football comes back together, meeting up every year. The two best teams meet up. Now we're gonna NEFL and CFL meeting up for the first time ever. That'd be great for the future. And it's great for European of American football in Europe yeah. for the future for us and then be coming back together. My last couple of years everybody knows that's been messy and whatever it's been. This is it. Looking forward now and starting with what you said super final number one. So this is the first step for a joint European venture of this super final number one and then next year number two and so on and so forth. So moving into the future 
that this is a great start. This is a first step. But give me your take on what's the what's the the the, the level of players for the national team, uh, for the Towers team here, and for the Svako Raiders. Obviously, the, the both teams have some great football players. Uh, I've known uh, obviously Copenhagen Towers for a long time. We have several national team players uh, on the team we've always had and a, a great coaching staff. I know the, the Austrian team as well. I know the Austrian national team for, for many years. I know the coaching staff from from the Svarko, uh, from the Raiders. Uh, Shuan, I know him for many years. My son played college football. He actually played him two years ago. So, so I know the two teams very well and both teams are very well coached, very disciplined football players, fundamental football. The, both teams are sound on fundamental football. This is going to be a, a great football game like with some great football for those who like football like fundamental and uh, all the basic stuff is going to be there you're welcome to answer this biased who will win the game today <laughs> i think the best team will win but obviously <laughs> apparently we, we need what we do this is this is kind of we have like a rehearsal every week. We, most of you guys know that we have European Championships coming up in a, in a couple of weeks, actually four weeks from now. And our opening game is going to be Denmark and Austria. And this could be a rehearsal for that. So I would like to see Towers come up on top, meaning that, hey, that could happen uh, in four weeks from now. Like if we, we do what we do today, Denmark beating Austria, that would be great. Perfect. Thank you very much for stopping by and enjoy the game. Thank you. You too. I'm here with the head coach for the Copenhagen Towers, Peter Herbil. And Peter, thanks for dropping by. This is a historical moment for European football as we see it. This is the Super Final number one. So what's the emphasis for the Copenhagen Towers team today? Well, the emphasis is to go out and compete and play our very best uh, on this fantastic event. And uh, we're very happy to host uh, Austria here, the Svarko Raiders. So fantastic game and, and go out and compete uh, as best as we can. And what's your take on the Svako team? What's what's your expectations from what what are they bringing today? Well, fantastic football team. There are no uh, no weaknesses uh, on their team. Great football players. So I expect a tough matchup, but uh, absolutely one where we can be competitive. It's being competitive, we need the players on the field today to be competitive. Tell me who for the viewers at home to watch for the Copenhagen Towers for the offensive unit. Give me two players. Well, I think uh, it has to start in, uh, with uh, with Randy, our quarterback. He has to uh, to play a great game today, like he did in the Castell game. And then, of course, we expect Dayton Win and all the import to come out and deliver in this game as well. So, uh, two players who are really looking forward to play this game and uh, and are here for for that reason. And on the defensive side, I, I think I'll watch uh, Mess McQuart, uh, who's been uh, the the big performer this year, uh, and see see how he matches up against this uh, good old line from Svarko. And a second player for the defensive side of the ball for Towers? Well, I think in a game like this, you expect your captain to stay up, step up. So I don't think we can uh, we can avoid mentioning uh, Mount Spitz, who's been here for so many years and has so much uh, experience. And, uh, and I can't wait to see how he plays today. Perfect. And then, as tradition calls, who is the X factor today for the Copenhagen Towers? Well, I think uh, I think the X, X factor is uh, is is the team as a whole, how they're able to stay together and how they're able to uh, to function in in a situation where there will be a lot of pressure on them, where they will be pushed to to the very edge of what they're able to do. I think the X factor will be how well are we able to stay together and uh, and fight as a unit. Thanks for dropping by, coach, and good luck with the game today. Thank you. Så vil vi nok gerne hedre en af vores nu tidligere spillere. Det er en spiller, som har betydet vældig ikke meget for Towers gennem tiden, men som nu efterhånden har hængt hjemme på hylden igen. Han uh, spillede for et antal klubber, men sluttede med syv sæsoner her i Copenhagen Towers. Han spillede første gang 14 år gammel i 1990. Nåede 26 sæsoner før han stoppede i oktober 2017. Han har spillet Hele 22 sæsoner i Nationalligaen, og altså syv af disse for Copenhagen Towers. I den her karriere har Jernmanden og misset blot ni kampe ud af de her 22 Nationalliga sæsoner. Han har misset fire. Han har spillet 11 Mermaid Bowls og fået syv af dem. Tre af dem hos Copenhagen Towers i 2013. 2014, 2017, og så har han spillet fem landskampe. I dag har han at sige tak for to tjeneste i mange, mange år, men helt gerne til sport og til sport.
nummer 4 igen, det er en del til herude, spiller som så er det på tide, at vi begynder at byde et rigtig hjerteligt velkommen til Gentogte Sportpark og Tavers Field her til den her helt fenomenalt spændende aften. Den største kamp, der bliver spillet i Danmark i nu i sportens 30 år i historien, kan vi godt over at forstå. Superfinal mellem KB Towers og Svarko Raiders, altså nummer 4 i Europa mod Towers, som nu er nummer 7 i Europa, ud af ca. 1500 hold. Så det er altså i lige ud af det lige, som vi ser her på Gentop Sportpark i aften. Vi håber, at vi glæder os præcis lige så meget, som vi gør. Først skal vi have brugt velkommen til kampens dommer.
vores alle sammen lige tag og ønske et rigtigt hjertes lykke med fødselsdagen til vores alle sammen head coach, Peter Herbil, som bliver 36 i dag. Tillykke med dagen, Herbil. Og nu skal vi hedder og østrig med den østriske nationalsang, så jeg vil bede om at rejse op og tage handen af.
Senda, York Tyson. Welcome to the official. This is it. This is the super this is final. It. This is the super final. It doesn't get better, be, any better than this in, in European football. This is for the European rankings. This is the number four ranked and number seven ranked team. We got the Towers who won the NEFL championship, and we got the Swaco Raiders who won the CEFL championship. And now, for the first time in history, these these two conferences are meeting at what we call the super final, and we call it the super final number one because this is a historic moment. This is what we want for the future of football in Europe. That these two conferences will meet every year and then just evolve and get bigger and better. So today is a historic moment, ladies and gentlemen. I'm joined here in the booth. By Miguel Gulbia, my name is Bjorn Stadil, and we will take you through this game with the Super Final once again, a historic moment. It's an absolutely incredible moment. Uh, you uh, likened this to the uh, the NFL, actually, or the uh, the North American Football League before it became the NFL. Yeah. With the with the National Football League and the American Football League deciding to hey, let's make a final together. Exactly, and that, this is what I see: the historic moment of two conferences joining together for a Super Bowl. So as I see it, this is the, is the European Super Bowl. So we're really looking forward to this game. And now the Copenhagen Towers are lining up for the return. So we will start with the Copenhagen Towers offense once the, the Dayton win. Number 13, as you can see at the left side of your screen, will return the ball for Copenhagen Towers. This is the starting offense. So once, as you can see, number 13. Oh, this is the, the Raiders oh, starting this offense. This is the Raiders starting offense. <laughs> we just. So now you can see it. This is a prelude. So if we can take this graphic away and put on the towers. There it is, the uh, there it is offense of the towers. As you can see, number 13, the running back, the running back for the Copenhagen Towers is returning the ball. The American import, Dayton win. Yeah, and uh, if you follow this, uh, this broadcast uh, before we, uh, we got to this, uh, this point, uh, the, the coach of the Towers, Peter Happy, uh, put some emphasis on David Wynn as a playmaker on this team, uh, on the offense. And he has been in the National League, the, the best uh, division in Denmark. He has been absolutely spectacular. And he was the, the MVP of the league last year. And we have the kickoff. David Wynn picks up the ball right around the goal line. Tries to get up the middle, but he's tackled very quickly. Very good job by the Raiders special teams unit. The Towers are going to start their first offensive drive right around the 10 yard line. And here we got the starting offense once again. Number five, Randall Squirta, American football import for the Copenhagen Towers, will be an impact player in this game today. And first, we got Philip Toon, who catches the ball for a first, new first down for the Copenhagen Towers. And as I said, number five, the quarterback, the American quarterback for the Copenhagen Towers, will be an impact player today. He needs to play at his best level, talking to Coach Happy before the game. And he's been the quarterback of, uh, of choice uh, to be the habit in the European games this year. Whenever this, they've been uh, in a bind, they've uh, stuck with uh, Randy Schroeder. This is a pass to the right side. Eskaton, who's also going to kick the ball to, for the Towers, gets about six yards of this play. Yeah, it was a quick slant play here. It's a quick slant from Schroeder to, to Eskaton. Makes it a second down and four for the Towers, the home team. Make sure it'll look to the right. Finds his man, who's gets his feet down and gets out of bounds. Again, it's number 80, Eskatoon. And if we can see the defensive graphics for the Svatko Raiders. Here you see the starting defense. 
emphasis on defensive end Maximilian Wild and the linebacker crew as a whole. This is a running play today, Nguyen. He's uh, hard to bring down. Usually it takes a, a bunch of guys to get the running back to the ground, even though he's not that big. He's quite a small guy, actually. Uh, he's a shifty back. He's, a, he's, a, he's more of a scat back, but he can lower his shoulders and pound through it as well. We talked to Coach Shuan Fatah for the, for the Raiders before the game, and they have eyes for, for, for Dayton Wynn, and they know they need to stop this guy. And as well, the Towers, they need to get him rolling do it, do it at the start of the game. Second down and 12 for the Towers. Again, a handoff to Dayton Wynn. It's time up the middle. It's about four yards in this play. Makes it a third down and eight. Looking at the offense and looking at the defense at the moment on the field, we got speed on the Towers offense. That's what they're built around. And as well for the, for the, uh, for the Svaco Raiders, they're all also built on speed on defense. So this will be a great matchup to follow. Third down and nine. And the Towers check the play on the sideline. Schroeder in the pistol. Dayton Wynn behind him. It's a pass. Schroeder looks to the left, passes to the left, just outside the reach of the receiver here. I think it's Eskatonian, number 80. This makes it a fourth down, and uh, the punting units entering the field for Towers. Yeah, he did a 15 yards out on this one, but he couldn't manage to, The ball was thrown a little bit too high and too much in front of him, so he couldn't pull that one in. So a great stop here for the, for the Svaco Raiders, and a not so good start for the Copenhagen Towers. But this is normal in American football. In, normally in football, you, the teams, they first quarter, they just feel each other out to see what's the weaknesses, where, where, what can I produce against the other team. So, so this is a... A building process. Slightly low snap, but Eskison gets the kickoff. Gets a good bounce for the Towers. All the way down to the 10 yard line, even further. That is an amazing punt from Eskison. Really, really great. This is a great field position for the Copenhagen Towers. And I think it was on purpose that they did this wide left on this one, not to give it to Sandro Platzkuma, who was the return guy for the, for the Raiders. And now checking the Svaco Raiders offense. As you can see, running back number seven, Svats, Sandro Platzkuma, one of the one of the, the impact players on the Raiders team. And as well, number 12, follow this guy, Sean Shelton, also an impact player. A one to watch, according to Coach Shuan Fatah. First down and ten for the Raiders. Direct snap, I'm not sure that was intentional, but that's a solid play, it's hard to get down. It's about five yards on that play. Yeah, it looked like a little high uh, on this direct snap, on this sweet pass. And here we see the defense for the Copenhagen Towers. We need to follow here number 21, Maunus Pitts. And we need to follow number 95, Mets McQuad, according to head coach Peter Happy. This is a pass play. Under pressure from the Towers defensive line, gets a big hit at the end of this play. Yeah, you saw this one. Sean Shelton, he looked down the field, but everything was close, so he decided to, get to, to keep it and run for himself. Well, uh, thing a flag to, on the play. Another yeah. thing to look at here, uh, if they line up directly, is uh, number 99 from the Towers, and uh, it was a Fuxa, uh, number 63 from the uh, from Raiders. Both huge guys, both of them two meters and seven centimeters tall. Uh, Kaiser, 135 pounds, uh, kilos, of course, and uh, uh, Fuchsia is actually 10 kilos heavier. Yeah, that, that is, a bit, I'm glad you, you say this, because we actually have a weight advantage on the Austrian team, because they are bigger, they are, have been powerlifting for, for a long, long time, so they're actually a bigger team, the Austrian than the Danish team. Second down, 12. Uh, it's a free play down the right sideline, and it's almost caught. Covers there by number 25, Anas Kerstensen. 
Yeah, and as I said, the, the defense jumped on this one, so it was a free play for for uh, sorry for um, Sean for Shelton. Sean Shelton. So he just needed to have a receiver go deep and then just throw the bomb down there and see what happens. And obviously, he didn't catch the ball, so it's a it's a new five yards for free for the Slacko offense. Pass ended up being complete, so they just accept the offside penalty. Make the second down with seven. Get a man in motion. Fakes the handoff and throws the screen, but he couldn't get a hold of the ball. Number 25, Tobias Bonatti. Yeah, number 95, as we see here in the picture, he spotted this screen very, very quickly and just ran out to the flat and was a part of the non-completion for the Raiders. You touched on it uh, just uh, a couple of minutes ago. This is a very fast defense. It's hard to, to make this kind of uh, a place against the towers. Third down and seven for the Raiders. Trying the hard cut, looking right under pressure. Fires to the right sideline and it is caught. Caught for the first down for the Raiders. Yeah, this is also a star for the for the Raiders team, Fabian Abfalter. He had a crucial role in the the final against the, the uh, Kosh Rams in Turkey, and also a player to watch. So now a new first down. This is a little swing pass. He gets some space at the right sideline. This was uh, Sandro Platzkuma, the guy that was synthesized by the uh, the Austrian coach before the game. Exactly. When I see Platzkuma here, I, Alessandro Platzkuma, there are two Platzkumas on the, the Raiders team. When I see Sandro Platzkuma, he reminds me of Danny Woodhead, the running back for the in the NFL. He, he's built like a downhill skier, very, very thick thighs and a very shifty lower body. First and ten, this is a handoff. Down the middle, there's a flag on the play. Game is number 25, to Spinazzi carrying the ball. Yeah, he stopped short here from Alexander Munster, the inside linebacker for the Copenhagen Towers, but there's a flag on the play. And normally in that position it's a holding, but let's see what the judges say. Yeah, and as I said, a holding from number 60, Florian Hörhager from the Raiders team. It's a 10-year penalty making this a first down 20. And it's also interesting, Grant, to see uh, Sandu Platzkova. Uh, he's lined up a lot in the, in the slot position, not as a, as a running back, as he's listed on the rest of the we've, uh, we've been looking at. That's true. He is a he's a multi-talented athlete and a, and a weapon for the for the Austrian. And now here, just they're up in a uh, empty set for the Raiders. Set Pass to the right. A lot of yards in this. Oh, he gets out of the grasp of the defender, so he's pushed out after about 30 yards. Yeah. Great game by the Raiders here. Yeah, it is. And uh, another good play by Fabian Abfalder. <laughs> And we have to have the chain set before we can start the play. The ball's on the 49 yard line of the towers. The Raiders in opposing territory with the first down and 10. Again, that's good in motion. Cuts it upfield, but it's caught after about four yards. Yeah, we see this motion where he gets an in stride, this sweep. Uh, and for, for, for the tower's offense, uh, sorry, for the tower's defense to stop this guy in motion, that's very difficult. So as you can see, he, he more or less gets stopped on the line of scrimmage, but he just powers through it and gets a bonus five yards, actually. Yeah, that's the play we've seen uh, in the Danish league in the NFL as well, this uh, kind of jet sweep motion before the, uh, before the snap. 
Second down and five for the Raiders. Again, motion, fakes the handoff. Under pressure, looks down the middle of the field and it's complete. And it is Sandro Platzkuma. Yeah, once again, this multi-purpose weapon that they got uh, on, on the Raiders team. Lining him up at running back, lining, lining him up at flex receiver, running, catching the ball. So the Towers will have a hard time today to stop him, but they need to emphasize on, on, on this guy. Yeah, Coach Fata wasn't uh, lying. He is a, a big focal point of this offense. First down and 10 for the Raiders. Drops back. Out he takes off. And he's got a lot of room to run. He's got some wheels and he's in for the touchdown. Touchdowns for our Raiders. Yeah, you saw Sean Shelton on this one. He looked downfield, nothing was open, but nobody was covering him. So he more or less just tucked the ball and it was a free run to the touchdown. And that's what you get when you have a mobile, uh, mobile uh, uh, quarterback. You need to account for it. And as we can see on the, on the formation, the kick formation now, they lined up to a left side, just waiting with the snapper in place and the holder and the kicker, where the rest of the team was wide left. But now they line up in a traditional kick formation. Snap's good, hold is good, kick is up, and it is good. This gives us uh, a lead for the Raiders, the visiting team. Yeah, it, to be honest, speaking to a lot of Danish players, speaking to a lot of coaches, and the there's no doubt about it, the Towers are the underdogs in this game, because the Swaco Raiders have been producing for many, many, many years. They have the same head coach uh, for many years, they have the same offensive coordinator, just like the Towers have, but the players and the imports are just the quality over the Danish players, as I see it. Uh, talking to Danish coaches as well, and to players, they match up pretty great. Their best against our best, but then the second level, then there's a huge drop on the Danish team to the second best player, whereas for the Austrian team, their backups are almost as good as the starters. And that's, that's gonna be a, 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 that's gonna be something to watch today. See the depth of these two teams. The, the Raiders are held in very high regard in Denmark. They're viewed as a, as a genuine powerhouse in American uh, football in Europe. It's a kind of swift kick down the middle, ends up in Dayton Wynn's hands, tries to cut to the outside, cuts back inside, but gets stopped at the 34-yard line, 33 maybe. Yeah, actually stopped by Tobias Bonacci, number 25 from the Swaco Raiders, starting running back as well. But uh, a lot better field position this time for the, uh, for the home team. Last time they started on their own 10-yard line, this is a good 25 yards better. First and ten by the towers. Oh, and off and fumble on the handoff. But they didn't win. The running back is uh, quick to fall on it. Yeah, we got the miss point on this one wasn't very good. So a bad handoff resulted in a fumble. But they didn't win. Was quick to recover that ball. The towers end up losing just two yards, I think. Looking at this uh, second down and twelve. Randall Schroeder trying the hard count and checking to the sideline. This time a draw gets out of the first tackle but is caught from behind by the Raiders defense. Gets about five yards in this play. And caught by Philip Markreiter, also a player to watch according to head coach Sean Fata. Playing from the outside linebacker position. Third down and seven for the home team. Still the pistol formation for the towers. Pass, try to look into the left, going to the left. He's got a man, oh, close. Just got the fingertips on this one. It was uh, number eight, Lesator, trying to haul this one in. The ball falls incomplete, and again a fourth down. Lesator is a tight end slash receiver and I think they wanted the matchup because Lassitore is a huge uh, tall receiver 
and trying to match it up against the the, the, the Raiders all, uh, the defensive the backs to, to kind of like get this high ball. But it didn't work on this series. Yeah, the towers have uh, quite a few uh, tight ends, Re true tight ends, who's got the who's got the size to be tight ends. And that's not normal in in European football, actually. Eskatron with the kick, going deep, fielded very well. Just slips up, uh, Patrick Donahue, number ten from the Raiders. Yeah, Patrick John Donahue also one of the imports for the Raiders team. But actually, this is where, where I thought that the, the Raiders team would be much better. That was on special teams, actually, because of the depth of the Raiders team compared to the depth of the, of the Towers team. But at the moment, these, except for the obvious touchdown for the Svako Raiders, this has been an evenly matched game as I see it. Let's see if the Raiders are going to change this, this possession. First down and 10. Again, a man in motion, Patrick Donahue. John Shelton keeps the ball and runs with it for about four yards. Yeah, fast couple up here by number six, Sve Finson, and number 93, Christopher Brun, from the D-line and the outside linebacker position. This run calls for a second down seven for the Raiders. Again, this four receiver set. Sheldon looks to the left, go to the left, finds Patrick Donahue, who's tackled. Now he gets out of the first one, actually, but it's pushed out of bounds. Yeah, but Manus very, Bitch. very fast. We got Manus Bitch from the safety position, and we got uh, Philip Hargett from the, from the outside linebacker position coming in to make these gang tackles. And that, speaking to the def def defensive coordinator for the Towers, that's what one of the emphasis for, for the defense here. They need to swarm to the ball, because if the... The athletic abilities of the Austrian receivers are so great, so they need to be more people on the tackle. Third down three for the Raiders. Sheldon looking to the right, goes to the right. Finds his man. Yeah, the Raiders get a new first down. And once again, Fabian Abfalter with three catches of 10 yards plus in this game. So the Towers, they need to really put a man on this guy. It's been very good uh, to the start of this game. The Raiders get onto tower territory again. First and ten from the 41 yard line. Get a man in motion, gets the ball. It's Sandro uh, Plaskum again. Gobbled up here by number 95, Mess Marqua. He's got the kind of st the same profile as Dayton Wynn from the Towers. This uh, semi running back, semi receiver, slot guy, uh, who's got some power in his legs, even though he's not the biggest. Exactly. And talking to the head coach for the for the Raiders, they said he is like an import. He is a yeah, multi-talented <laughs> weapon for the Raiders. Second down six for the Austrians. Down here in motion. Gets the hand, hand off of this sweeping motion. Almost jumps over the guy. Very hard to bring down. Still on his feet. Very impressive balance on this. Very hard to stay upright when you've got uh, people hanging around your legs. You actually have two people on his legs on this one. And a third down, third guy, a third guy to bring him down. That was an impressive run by Donahue. The American brings up a new first down for the Raiders. At the 30-yard line. And here you can see Patrick Donahue in the picture. A little bit winded, as I can see from here. Sandro Plasco in motion again. Fakes this little uh, swing pass. Oh, almost caught by a number 21 Mounts pitch. Almost interception. He made the play action and then went deep. Didn't fool the defensive back of the towers because they ran with Donahue on this one and the safety went over the top and almost intercept intercepted this one. Manu Spitsch, number 21, who almost came up with this interception, also a, a big star in the Danish league. He's the MVP of the Mermaid Bowl last year, the finals in Denmark. 
Second down and ten for the Austrians. Going to the left, Sean Shelton. Very good catch. He's tackled for about six yards. It's uh, Sandro Platzkoma's brother, Adrian Platzkoma, with number six. So if not the first Platzkoma, then we take the second Platzkoma. Just hit any Platzkoma and you're okay. There's actually a little joke running around with the picture of these guys hanging in, uh, in a basement. Not, not in that way you think, but working out and they're hanging there with their upper bodies. And then, as the coach said, everybody should have a couple of Platzkumas hanging in the, in the basement. Third down three. Again, Joel Shelton keeps the ball. He's tackled very close to the line to gain. This is actually one of the signature, uh, signature plays for the Raiders. It's the, the speed option. And they normally convert on this one. They, they run it on a third down and short very often. Now it's a fourth down and short. And my guess is they'll run the same play once again. Yeah, fourth down, as you say, and that's just about half a yard. That much the, uh, the Raiders need to get your first down. And as I said, the same play, and yep. he keeps the ball and gets a new first down. You call it. Yep. It's a signature play, so it's not like I'm a great wizard or something, but they run this, this on a third down short, they run it on a fourth down, and they run it in the end zone. And it's a matter of they know that you know that we run it, but can you stop it? And that's more the mentality that, 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 that the offense comes with. New first down for the Raiders. The handoff. Kicks it to the outside and is caught very quickly again. That's number 25 to be Bonatti. Gets about two yards on this play. So now it's uh, at least in the first quarter here when it runs out. So in the first quarter, and now we switch field position. The Raiders are up seven to nothing. Seven it's, to uh, nothing. it's not that bad looking from the, the tower's perspective. I know the, uh, the Raiders have the ball close to the end zone, but still. Yeah, not at all. This is actually, the, the towers are still in this game by, but yeah, by far. But now they really need to make a stop here at the red, red zone in the second quarter. Because they need to get back in this game because slowly if the Raiders go down and score at, on this drive, they will slowly just run out the, the run up the score. So the Towers, they need to get in this game again, either by a, a interception, almost an interception here before. So that's what we need. We need a, chain, a game changer for the Towers. Also, as you said, with the, uh, with the Raiders' advantage in depth, when, you, when the Towers starters from the, are in the game, at the start of the game, they need to take the opportunities that they get. Yeah, exactly. Because the longer we get into the game, the more tired people get. And if the Austrian team can just put another running back in, or another offensive lineman, or another, or another, then they have the depth to do this and to get the fresh legs on the field all the time. And the Danish crew, they don't have that as much. Second down, eight. Hand off, bouncing to the left. All spins out of the tackle. Just caught for about six or seven yards. A nice play here by uh, Mikkel Stilling, defensive lineman for the Copenhagen Towers, who came out to the flat and actually made the, the, the touchdown saving tackle. Seven yards on this play, making this a uh, third down on one. Very close to the end zone, out at the six yard line, I think. And on human motion. Sheldon keeps the ball. There's enough for you. First down is a touchdown. Yes! They call it a touchdown, but, 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 but there's a flag on the play as well. So let's see what happens. It was Alexander Mustel, number 10, the inside linebacker for the Copenhagen Towers. But this is a holding on the Raiders. 
It's gonna push it from uh, 30 and 1 to 30 and 11. It's uh, catastrophic. Yeah, but as they call it here on the field, it was a personal foul, it was a face mask on the Towers defense. So the touchdown will stand and the penalty will be assessed on the kickoff. It's the second rushing touchdown of uh, the game for Sean Shelton. The kick is good. And the Raiders, the visiting Raiders, are 14 to nothing. Yeah, this is not the greatest start for the Copenhagen Towers. They need to get back into this game. They need to put up some points on the, on the board. Because uh, as I said earlier, or the Raiders will slowly just grab the hold of the, the control of this game and then just run it out. What adjustments would you, would you make uh, to the Towers offense? Actually, as I've seen it right now, I, I, I really can't pinpoint it because they're doing the right thing, but they're just at the moment overmatched by the defense for the Swako Raiders. This uh, face mask penalty is enforced on this kickoff, so uh, we're going to kick off from midfield. But coming back to what, what the adjustments the, the Towers need to make, actually, they. The throwing um, between the quarterback and the receiver, it's been a little bit off during the first quarter. So they need to adjust the throwing, the, 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 the motion, the, the rhythm, the chemistry actually between receiver and, uh, and quarterback. Number nine, Thomas Pickelmann kicks off. Very deep kick. There's still a flag on the play. I think the, uh, the Raiders were offside on this, this kickoff. Yeah, I think they're just declining this one and taking it on the on the twenty yard line. Let's see. Yeah, sorry, on the 30th, of, of course. Yeah, the, the towers elect to add on the five yards to the, uh, the starting point from the touchback. So they're going to start from the 25 yard line. 25 yard line. That's the word I'm looking for. And off to Dayton Wynn. He's oh, gets out the first tackle. Very well done. Oh, he breaks the first tackle here from number 93, I think. Ends up getting four yards. I think this is a second down to six. It was actually number 90, Maximilian Wild, who got him in the backfield, but he slipped out of that one and got a small four yards on it. Another handoff to Dayton Wynn down the right sideline. A lot of bodies around him. Can that tackle at about uh, four yards there. That's the speed again, as we talked about earlier. The speed from both these teams. So really, uh, they need to find a, a more of a power rhythm, as I see it at the moment. See if we can outmatch the Swako Raiders. Raiders further down the middle, but too high for his target. He was looking for number 88 from two Nielsen. At this play. That's what I, we, we talked about just just a couple of minutes ago. The, the the chemistry between the receivers and the quarterback it's not there yet. So they really need to work on that because the balls are either overthrown or underthrown or so they need to get them in, in rhythm. Back to punt. This ball is again the Brady has told. Low snap, well handled by Escaton. Sando Platzkummer makes, does the ball bounce. Doesn't 
pick up the ball, so it uh, falls out of bounds at a very good place for the Towers. As I saw it from you, this is the second time that the Towers special teams unit has been right on the money. Because the, the punt unit is actually what's been working the best so far. No, that's not true, but still, the punting unit is very, very good. So the, it's the second time that the Swaco offense has to start at the 10-yard line or less. Down 10. The ball's at the five yard line. Looking to the right, this little swing pass. Tackled. Oh, but carries a man for a couple extra yards. A great tackle here by number 10, Alexander Mülster, the li inside linebacker for the Copenhagen Towers. Really getting out there and breaking down and doing a very, very solid form tackle. Also very good power from uh, Tobias Bonazzi on this play, carrying the, uh, the defender. Yeah, that's true, but actually that, that's the whole game in a nutshell as, as we see it at the moment, because the Towers need to make these very good form tackles and then two or three other guys to bring the, the, the Raider player down. Shelton looking down the middle, finds Patrick Donahue. He's tackled very quickly by number 24, Simon Larsen. And once again, perfect form tackle, and you saw Donahue on this one. He tried to get out of it. He wanted more yards on that one, but very solid form tackle from number 24, Simon Larsen. And it's a new first down for the Raiders. <laughs> Down. Again, Klatskuma, Thunder Klatskuma in motion, handoff. Now as John Shelton keeps the ball, runs. And then once again, this speed option. And it's a matter of, you can't stop it, we'll keep on running it. The only dangerous thing about that is that you actually put your quarterback, your star player in a running back role. So the chances of getting hurt, it's there. And for me, mm, it's, it's a bit dangerous, but hey. If it works, keep on pounding it. Yeah, and uh, if, uh, if Sean Shelton runs for touchdowns, he doesn't get hit. Exactly. Now he has two of them. Second down three. Hand off to Tobias Bonatti. Gets contacted very quickly and brought down very quickly. Good job by the Towers defense on this play. Yeah, you saw the two defensive tackles. You got Mes Marqua coming in there, making the first contact, and then number 93, Christopher Boone, making the end, uh, end tackle on this one and bringing him down. And those are two of the, as I see it, the key players for the Copenhagen Towers in this game is the two defensive tackle on the defensive line. Absolutely. And the, in, the, in Denmark, the Towers are known for the defensive line. It's one of their greatest assets. They have to play well in this game. Shelton looking to the left, going to the left. Find some man, oh. it's caught. Adrian Platzkuma. That was just a beautiful catch by Adrian Platzkuma. Also that laser thrown by Sean Shelton. Laser, but those soft hands, he just high pointed it and then in stride, kept on running. And you got like three or four Towers players on him before he, he went down. It's clearly enough for a new first down for the Raiders. Still we see this four receiver set to receive us to each side of uh, Sean Shelton. Looking down the left, going to the left and finding Patrick Donahue. Oh, what a great tackle by number 24. Once again, Simon Mark Larsen. Because Donahue, he has, he's a shifty receiver, and he can actually just juke the shoes off you. So, and once again, beautiful form tackle here by the Copenhagen Towers. Give the uh, visiting Raiders, Swaka Raiders of Tirol, uh, your first down. First down, 10. Again, 
Sheldon Donahue in motion. Sheldon looking down the middle. It's a little screenplay to Sandro Platzkoma. That was a beautiful screen setup. A misdirection where you have uh, Donahue going to the right side and then you have Platzkoma going back towards the motion play. So it was a little fake from a uh, little misdirection here for the Raiders. But the, the towers, they spotted it fairly quickly and brought him down. Second down four. And again, the Raiders are in a very good position to score. And we need to see a stop now for the Copenhagen Towers to keep them in the game. Sheldon looking left, finding Donahue, but he can't hold on to the ball. Incomplete. And this is the first incompletion in a while from the Raiders. Yeah, it actually is, but you saw Philip Haggett, outside linebacker for the Copenhagen Towers. He was in the face of Donahue on this one. So maybe Donahue, he heard the, the <laughs> the footsteps. Third down and three. Shelton looking right, going right, finds his man. And it's a new first down for the Raiders. Yeah. Number 80, Fabian Abfalda. And that Pick your poison, because you got Abfalda as a talented receiver, made, just made three catches for, <laughs> for over 10, 30, uh, 20 yards. And then you got uh, the Platskuma brothers, you got uh, the running back, uh, or you got Patrick Donahue, you got Tobias Bonazzi. So pick your poison as the Towers defense. First and goal now for the Raiders at the 10-yard line. Sheldon looking left. Scrambling for some time. Uh, he will keep this ball. He will not. He's going to run it, but he's not going to make it. He's going to pick up about three yards, maybe four. Yeah, game, uh, touchdown saving tackle here by Sve Finson, number six, outside linebacker for the Copenhagen Towers. This breaks this uh, second down and goal. Either in this one or the next one, we will see again the speed option. Probably not this one. Three receivers to the right this time for Sean Sheldon. Looking right, going for his running back, and it just outside the reach. It was just overthrown on this one. It was a little swing pass and up and go. Trying to make uh, make it a one-on-one -on -one situation with uh, Tobias Bonazzi on the left side. Third down and goal. My guess is you will see the running back lineup on the right side of the quarterback, and then you will see the speed option on this one. Well, first part of this is true. Running back on the right side. Speed option ends up with Sean Sheldon looking for receivers going in the back of the end zone. It's caught touchdown. Yeah, but wait a minute. Adrian Platzkuma caught this one in the end zone for what they call a touchdown. But there is a flag on the play in the backfield. And that is nine out of ten times in the holding from the offensive line. So let's see what happens here. Number 63, Joseph Fuxa. It's the big guy. I think he's the right tackle, actually. So what should have been an Adrian Platzkuma touchdown is called back from a hold for a holding. So now a third down and long. Third and goal still. Goal still. It's time from the 15-yard line. Now this is the kind of break that the towers they need. So now they need to stop the Raiders. Shelton looking right, going to the right, finding Sandro Plasco, but he's caught. Oh, nice tackle by, by Svensson. He just wrapped this one up in a form tackle and it just kept on. It just hang on to Plasco on this one. And the crowd likes this. This is great football. This is what we want to see. And now we've got uh, Thomas Pichmann lining up for the field goal. The Raiders have a designated kicker uh, in this game. 
the towers at uh, receiver as Katon. Left for the kicker, Thomas Griezmann. Kick is up and looks good. Let's see the refs. Yep. 17 to nothing. Yeah, do the uh, do the towers absolutely have to put the points on the board? I, w I would say yes, they have to, because as we see it now on the scoreboard, it's 17 to zero, and we're we have four minutes left of the second quarter, and I know for a fact that this Raiders team they are amazing in halftime to make adjustments. So we need for the towers to make. A touchdown now, get points on the board, and then go to the locker room with the heads held high, if you can say it like that. Because we know that the Raiders team, they will come out the gate and just keep on pounding and doing... They have been watching the weaknesses on the towers, so we, we should be looking forward for a third and fourth quarter where we can see why the Raiders is a powerhouse in European football. So, the, so yes, the towers, they need to put up points now. Still, the Towers only have one designated return man in uh, Dayton win. Get a long kickoff. Very uh, alternative handling by Dayton win. He stopped right around the 25, maybe 26 yard line. Actually, he runs into one of his own guys that stops his motion, and that's that's just too bad because this guy, Dayton Witten, as we see here on, on the screen, he is an incredible human being for one, but he's an incredible football player and, and, and freakishly athletic for his size. I mean, not just, yeah, he, as you can see, he's lined up now as a slot receiver. You called him a, a human joystick uh, he is a couple a human, of times yeah, he on is. Uh, broadcasting Towers games in the National League. Hand off to uh, Anton Wittmerer. They stopped very quickly. Oh, wait a minute. It's still a live ball here. Actually, we got the Raiders in here and stripping the ball. Uh, Philip Tu, number 88 from the Towers. Oh, he saw that fast. And then, yeah, that was good. That was a game. That was a game saving uh, recom uh, fumble recovery, I would say, from Philip Tu. But again, we see the speed of the Raiders defense. I didn't actually uh, even see the fumble. So many people swarming to the ball. Second down and eight for the Towers. Time to pass for the looking right. Pumps once and goes oh, down the sideline. And there's the flag. Yeah. Okay. Defensive pass interference is our guess. What we saw on this one was that Randy Schroeder, he just got nailed on it. Because once he released the ball, he just got hammered. And then obviously the ball is underthrown. So the receiver, he stops and trying to get back to the ball, and then the defensive player for the Raiders, he just grabs on for, the, yeah, for his life, and then, yeah, obviously, uh, per, uh, 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 pass interference. And it was number 20 from Patrick the... Pilger. the Patrick Pilger. It's a 15-yard penalty. Son of Gabby Pilger, the media uh, woman for the Slaco Raiders. First and ten for the Copenhagen Towers. Ball on the 42-yard line. Faking a run and wide open is Lesser Tor. Giving his team a new first down. I think it's going to be right on that line. Yeah, so you can see here the, the Towers offense. They mix it up a little bit. They put Dayton Wynn out of the slot receiver. They actually have the, the, the tight ends go out as receivers as well. So they're trying to mix it, mix it, mixing it up a little bit. To, so the whole oh, wait a minute. There's something wrong with the chain gang. They haven't set up yet. Uh, you hate it when that happens. They just lined up uh, to the wrong side. First and ten. I think this is the first time actually that, are, that the towers are on the uh, the Raiders half of the field. So it's a pass for looking to the right, going to the right, and oh, it's caught by Lester Tor. No, uh, it's not caught. He actually, he just he had it in his hand. He should have caught it. He should have caught it. This is the kind of place that you can't really afford against the Raiders. No, exactly. And that's, uh, again, the chemistry between the, the, the quarterback and the receivers. They really, really need to, to take advantage of these kind of plays. Second down 10. Again, trying the hard count. 
And you see, as you can see here on the field, we got Dayton Wynn back in the backfield. Schroeder looking to the left, finding Eskatron. Great tackle by the Raiders. And you see number number, 20, number 36. Six, 16, Arno Schwarz. Third down, four yards to go for the towers. Another pass. Schroeder going to the right. Oh, oh there's a fight for the ball. What is that? They end up calling it incomplete. Incomplete. That was actually a contested ball. And if the receiver and the defender went down with that one, the receiver always gets it as a catch, actually. So that was a good break for the Raiders on this one. Yeah, being a Seahawks fan, I know about uh, these simultaneous catches. <laughs> Fourth down and four, and the Towers offense is still in the game. Oh, we got a receiver on the right side of the offense. Ah, uh, okay, the cornerback sure, went okay, okay. right. Oh! Going to the right, it's the man wide here we open, Eskatorn. Down the right, right sideline. And more. There was some new miscommunication on the Raiders team because there was no cornerback over there at the start of the game. And then, uh, fortunately for the Raiders, Arno Schwarz, number 16, got over there, but he was covering the flat. And then Eskatorn just had a field, a field down, he had, he had downfield, just no coverage. Taking the handoff, going down the middle, finds a man, big pop. Well, we got, and it's we a got touchdown. A touchdown. Copenhagen Towers from number 88, Philip Chu Nielsen. And this was necessary for the Towers. Are if they? the Towers have any plans on winning this game, they had to put points on the board. Exactly, that we talked about before, but another one and another emphasis is for the game this is great because obviously if you're sitting at home and watching or if you're sitting here at the stadium this is good for the game because now we got we got a football game running here Skitswon will set up the, uh, the touchdown with a long pass takes it through the home team Copenhagen Towers are on the board just in time for the uh, for the first half. Yeah, we got a two-minute warning actually on this one. Right. Ah, beautiful! Now we got ourselves a ball game. So, a ten-point deficit. So if you're the uh, the Raiders right now, yep, a uh, minute 58 to go, do you play conservatively and make sure that the towers don't get the ball, or do you try to put more points on the board? More points on the board. Never, never put take your foot off the throttle. And as I know, the head coach for the for the Raiders, he will probably, oh, he will do the same because they are such a good football team, and they know that if they take their foot off the throttle and try to play conservative, go to the halftime, they will lose this game. Not, as such, but they will let the towers back into the game, and they don't need that for the Raiders. So, so the Raiders need to go on the field now and establish dominance and make sure that this score for the towers is not a momentum boost for them, so they can get back into the game. Yes, Katrina is ready to kick off for the towers. Trying the onside kick. kick. It's a very good try. Let's see who comes up with this ball. Oh. I actually think that number 33, Daniel Kako. The refs are pointing in the Raiders' direction. Ah. But very good onside kick. The ball traveled these uh, 10 yards that they have to. Yeah, it did. But I didn't see for who from the Raiders actually did this. But the outside Raider on this one, he got pummeled by Daniel Kako, number 33 for the Towers. And that was a very, very, very important stand from that uh, Raiders player because if he would have gone back or got getting blocked it would have been a towers ball so the Raiders player one ra ra <laughs> one Raider player actually saved this this ball for the Raiders Absolutely. that was a lot of Raiders in, in, in very short seconds if he had uh, had yielded from this uh, this tackle from Kako 
there would have been like five Towers players ready to jump on the ball. Exactly. First and ten for the Raiders. Shelton alone in backfield, looking to the right. He keeps trying to it. scramble. Throws the ball oh, in the we just spoke about him on special teams, and now he did this amazing, amazing interception. He undercuts the route of the receiver and comes up with the, with the interception. Very, very dangerous play for a defensive player, because if he doesn't get the interception, then it's most likely a completed pass, and then we need a game uh, TD uh, saving tackle yeah, for the rest of the team. If Cockman doesn't catch this ball, there's so much real estate for the, for the Raiders player to run on. Exactly. First and ten for the Towers. If they score a touchdown here, this is a very interesting game all of a sudden. Uh, it really, really is. And we got Philip Toon once again with the completion and a new first down for the Copenhagen Towers. Very strong hands from Philip Toon. Very hard catch to make. He had uh, defenders contacting him immediately on this pass. New first down 10, just waiting for the line, uh, for the chain, sorry, to get set. First and 10 with the time winding down, slowly. Schroeder oh, going to the right. Oh, and he slipped. Number 85 the, uh, here for the Copenhagen Towers. Jacob he just Gain. slipped on the turf. Jakob Gain. Jakob Gain has been hurt in the um, Karlstad Crusader game and has a little problem with his ankle. So he hasn't been the player that he was during the season. He's been a very, very important player for the Towers. Yeah, he was actually the one catching the, uh, the, 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 the finishing touchdown from the uh, Crusaders game. Exactly. The, the touchdown that put the Towers at even. Sure, going down. to the left. Green again. Oh, oh close for Jakob Green. And as a former receivers coach, you would hear me yell, look the ball in at this point, because that was a problem here, because he actually had the ball, but he didn't look the ball in. He, he, he looked upfield and looked for, for a new fresh first down instead of controlling the ball. It's very simple. If you can't see the ball, it's very hard to catch. So look at the ball until you're sure you have it. <laughs> exactly. Third and ten. Oh, that's a very low pass to Dane Wynn. It's ruled as a forward pass, therefore incomplete. Yeah, and you can see Randy Scorla, he needs to, I wouldn't say step up his game, but he really needs to... to he hasn't been on point exactly. this first half. He hasn't been on point, and you can see him now on this play, he just looks at the turf like, ah, got blah, 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 swear words. He's not, he's not very happy with himself at the moment. And I understand that. He's a, he's a talented quarterback. He hasn't quite his, his, uh, his own level of play today. Exactly. But he needs to be a goldfish. He needs to forget this and then next play. Fourth down and ten. Just a minute 15 left in this first half. Yeah, and they're going for it here on, for, on fourth down. Yeah, and it's, uh, it's on their own uh, side of the field. It's very aggressive by Coach Abbott. Schroeder looking left, going left, and another... And actually a interception but that was a perfect <laughs> interception for the Copenhagen Towers actually because now instead of uh, the the Raiders getting it on the 46 yard line they get it on the on their own 44 yard line so actually a not a very good interception by the Swako Raiders on this one yeah, it's, a, it's a swing of about 10 yards yeah but they, they need to be focused on 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 the downs what down is it because you know on a fourth down it's you can intercept it if you have real estate to run on, but if a diving interception like this one, don't do it. Just swat the ball down and get it over with, get the offense on the field again. This isn't the NFL. Exactly. Uh, if you were down with your knee, you're down. No matter if you're touched or not. First and ten, Patrick Donny here in motion. Oh, little trickery from the Raiders. Sando Platzko, he's got a lot of speed, he's got a lot of room to run in. Trying to shake the last defenders, but he can. Still, he's brought down at about the 15-yard line. Very good play by the Raiders. Yeah, and it's once again, Simon Mack, number 24 for the Towers, made a great tackle on this one, a touchdown-saving tackle. But now you can see the, the fatigue kind of like making, making an entrance on the Towers team, because 
The Raiders has been trying this misdirection a couple of times, but it, it didn't work. But now the, with the maybe tired legs and not so focused, it worked. And it's a big swing in, uh, in momentum in this game. The Towers had a chance to, to, to reach minus three if yep. they had uh, scored. Instead, right now, it uh, seems to be about to be uh, a Raiders touchdown. Yeah, and you, as you can see on, on, on the screen here, you got uh, 59 seconds left, and that's more than enough to score a touchdown. It's plenty of time. Was too too long for yeah. the Raiders. First and ten for the visiting team. Very tight formation this time. Shelton looking down the middle. Ends up going left and almost picked off. That was almost picked off. That was a great play here from number 70. Mikael Habitin from uh, from the offensive line of the Raiders because he saw Philip Haggett on this one. He Philip Haggett almost made the interception and then Mikael Habitin went in and made the contact. So Philip Haggett here in the middle, number one, couldn't make the tackle. And you can see in, <laughs> in the pictures here, he's not very happy about it. Second down and ten for the Austrians. Sean Sheldon directing. His own guys, Patrick Donahue in motion, gets the ball, sweep. He ends up losing a lot of yards on this one. Very good by the Towers defense. We spoke about this earlier. You got so much speed on both sides of the ball here, so it's it's a matter of who's the fastest. And a very good discipline by the by the Towers, making sure to to keep him, uh, Patrick Donahue, uh, not going for it all, not trying to, to do too much. Make sure that he doesn't get uh, get to push you backwards. Exactly. You need to kind of like flow with the ball, don't give any yards, and then the, let the people behind you come up and make the saving tackle. A long third down for the Raiders. Third down and about 15. Three receivers to the left. Sean Shelton. Flag thrown. Let's see if the Raiders I think it's a delay game. Hey, Josh. Yeah, exactly. The layoff game on the Raiders. Yeah. And now you got the Copenhagen Towers just they're pumped now because they, they can they can feel this momentum change now with the Raiders getting pushed more and more back. So it's a third down and very, very long. Yeah, and off screen we saw a bunch of the Towers defensive players on the field appealing to the uh, to the crowd. Make some noise. Make it harder for the for the Raiders. Shelton looking right. Coming back to the left, going for it all. Oh, he is just oh. overthrew his receiver, Sandro Platzkuma. Sandro Platzkuma, he was just free on this one with Daniel Kako trailing him. It looked like uh, Platzkuma just put a move on uh, on Kako. Just got a just got a step on the on the towers. He, he was just man. two to three steps in front of him, and then the ball was, as for a towers perspective, overthrown. The Raiders put Thomas Pilchmann on the field again, trying to put three more points on the board. Good snap, good hold, and it's wide left. It's no good. This, uh, this gives the Towers 40 seconds. And, uh, if I'm not mistaken, they've got uh, two timeouts left. That's enough time to put points on board. And I know we just uh, talked about it uh, before this, uh, this interception uh, from the Raiders, but still, the, Raiders, uh, the Towers, they have to go for it here. Yeah, they have to go for it. They, they, they need to, to get the momentum changed so they can go to halftime. As I said earlier, <laughs> the Raiders are a great team coming off the halftime. So the, the, the Towers, they need to put on points now. Pass to the left. This is caught by number 80, Eskitron. It's a flag, uh, flag on the play. Eskitron here on a quick out route. I think we need to see more of this, this, uh, this quicker game. It's uh, something that the, the Taos haven't done that much this first half. Let me see what happens. Uh, holding number 66. That's never nice to be called out. 
So number 66, Kasper Eis Christensen, made a holding here. So they get moved five yards back. It's 10 yards, actually. It's yeah, uh, yeah. first down and 20. Sorry, 20 yards. Yeah, 10 yards. Sure, they're looking to the right. Going to the right down the sideline. Oh, and it's caught by the towers. And Long pass. Jakob Green is in the game. Making up for the one he he dropped last uh, on the last series. And it's a new first down, Copenhagen Towers. Towers not electing to use the timeout. It's making sure that uh, to call the play while the chain's moving. Schroeder going to the left this time. He's got an open man. It's Jakob Green again. Green. And he goes. No. It's called inbound. Stop inbounds. Inbound. Yeah, but it, it's very important because now we need clock management. So obviously the towers they take their first time out here wisely because you got 19 seconds left. So what we need here for the towers is for them to clock management, right? So we need uh, completions and out of bounds. We need timeouts if they go inside. So it's it's more or less to see what do the Raiders do. Do they cover the outside so the receivers can't go out of bounds and open up the field in the middle? So now the, the, the chess game that is American football, it begins right here. Yeah, the, uh, the Raiders defense could be more of a kind of a shell in the, in the look of it because they need to, to make sure that the towers don't get anything deep and they need to make sure that the towers don't get the sideline. So they're going to they're gonna focus on the sidelines and on the deep end of the defense. They say they more or less just need to no touchdowns. That's it, because they need to milk the clock. Second down and one. They're lining up with the two outside linebackers on line. Looking finished. left under pressure, going after Escatoli. He gets it. He gets it for a new first down, and now they need to either take it. Oh, there's take a flag oh, on the play. No, 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 no. And it's uh, it's thrown at the uh, in the offensive backfield. And nine times out of ten, that's a holding. Let's see what the ref says. Yeah, the towers they know it as well. They're moving back. So number 54, Christopher Green, the bigger brother of uh, uh, Jakob Green, the receiver. He made a holding on this one. So instead of a uh, second and one, it's going to be a second and 11. Yeah, but the bad thing here is actually the clock. It's, it's, it's going right now, so they need to hurry up. Schroeder finding the win. First out of bounds. For about six yards. Yeah, so now we got two, two seconds left on the clock, and then they need to go for a Hail Mary on this one, or they just need to run, yeah, just see what happens. Yeah, either it's a deep ball down the field, or it's just give the ball somehow to Dayton Win and let him do the rest. During the break, we will have an interview with uh, both teams, so stay tuned in the half. The Raiders have three players right around the uh, the goal line, and as we mentioned, it was uh, give the ball to Dayton Win and let him do the rest. Only he uh, ended up slipping. That's it for the first half of this game. The Raiders up 17 to seven, 10 point advantage for the visiting Raiders. The Raiders are favorites in this game. It's about that surprising, but still, Towers had the chance, had the momentum, had the, uh, the opportunity to, uh, to put a touchdown on the board at the end of this half. I'm here with Peter Habil, head coach for the Copenhagen Towers, and uh, Peter, here at halftime with a 17-7 lead for the, uh, for the Raiders. Give me your emphasis on the score. What do you think of the game so far, and what's, what's your main focus coming back to the game in third and fourth quarter? Well, I would say that, that our offense took way too long to get going, and, and we can't do that when we play against an opponent like, like uh, Svarko. And that's why this half has been uh, rightfully so dominated by Svarko, and I think we are, we're feeling good that we're not down more. I think it, it, it was turning that way. 
I think we got to come out in the second half and then we got to start playing football, get the lights out of our eyes, and then just play aggressively. This is the final, there's nothing more to play for, so either you go big or you go home. What will you say to the players now going into the locker room? I, I've already told them what I just so, told you. And what did you, what did you say to them? I told them that we got to stay aggressive. It's still only 17-7. That might be good fortune, but that's not further away than we can catch up with them. And we got to give it all we got. We got to come up with all the stuff we can come up to try and win this game. So the word from here is go big or go home. Coach, good luck in the third and fourth quarter. Thank you very much. Thank you. I'm here with Paul Lash, the team manager for the Svako Raiders. And Paul, being a 17-7 deficit in the favor of your team, the Raiders, what can you tell me, what did you see in the first and second quarter from the Raiders team that they need to work on here on third and fourth quarter? Um, I think we started good with our offense and we need to keep the towers offense off the field so uh, that means we need to establish our drives i think we completed every third down so we didn't punt at the ball and at the end we must score if we have the opportunity to kick a field goal we must we must do that because you never know at the end three points or a pat can count with the 17-7 again is this what you uh, is this is this what you when you're coming into the game what did you think the the, the score would be in this at this point of the game Oh, we knew it was. It, it's going to be a close game. I mean, the, the Towers are a good coached football team. They have perfect, good players, big size, especially on the tight end position. So we knew our team going to be. It's going to be a tough game. And for us, it, we we were really surprised because normally we don't start that quick in the first half, especially after that long journey last yesterday. So we are really happy that we came out and scored twice with with Sean Shelton. Yeah, he ran the ball and he put up two uh, two touchdowns. Your only two touchdowns at the moment by the via the run game. So what, what's to be uh, adjusted here in halftime? I think the coaches maybe going to try to spread the ball a little bit more. So uh, we have a lot of good players on offense. We have Tobias Bonatti, Sandro Platzkumo, Patrick Donahue, Fabian Erpfalter. They are all playmakers. So what they maybe going to try? I, I'm not in there now, so they're talking about it. So they maybe going to try to spread the ball a little bit more because I think the Towers defense going to try now to stop the run with, with Sean Shelton. All right. And that was a word from the Austrian team for the Svako Raiders here. And thank you very much and have a great uh, th third and fourth quarter. You too. Thank you. We're just about ready to start the second half between the uh, Swako Raiders and the Copenhagen Towers. And the, the Raiders, they're up 17 to 7. What are the, uh, the Towers going to do? I know you talked to, to Coach Habil and we heard the interview, but in your mind, what, do you, what would you do if you were in uh, Habil's shoes? They need to go out now and play this game like it was a zero to zero game. So they need to kind of like start again. And as Coach Habil said, there was just, like we talked about as well, there was some miscommunication and they just need to get these small things right. And if they do that, they are more than in the game. They can actually go out and win this game. So. So they, the Towers are coming out with a sensation of if they do the little things right, they can win it. And the Swako Raiders are coming out with the, we just need to keep on pounding. I think the, the Raiders uh, team manager said it very well. The Raiders haven't punted in this game. It's been an incredibly effective offense. Oh, oh no, it's going to break. <laughs> <laughs> Almost broke through the uh, the towers lines of defense on this kickoff. Yeah, and Miss Marquardt, number 95, one of the stars on the defensive line, he made this special teams tackle <laughs> where he just wrapped him up. Anyways, the uh, Swaka Raiders are going to start this second half. Well, except for the kickoff, of course, uh, on the towers side of uh, midfield, the 49 yard line. No, it's going to be placed at midfield. The chain is just a bit off them. And it, on in this in, in in the screen now, as you can see it, with the offensive line of the Svako Raiders. This is actually one of the, the the strength of the team is their offensive line. It's by far one of the best offensive lines there is in in European football. First and ten for the Raiders. Three receivers to the left for Sean Shelton, the quarterback, taking the toss, keeps the ball, runs down the left, he's got some moves, and he's got speed until he's pulled down by Ron's pitch, number 21 from the Towers. Gets a new first down for his team. 
Sean Shelton. 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 And this shows the, the versatility of him. He's not only a, a, a throwing quarterback, he is a good decision quarterback. First and ten. Again, same play, this time the pitch to the running back. It's pulled down after about ten yards. Yeah, Tobias Bonatti, he got a new first down on this one. And that's the speed option, which we talked about in the first and second quarter. It's, it, oh, sorry, I, I called the first down, but it's not. It's actually second down of three on this speed option. Still a good play. Uh, basically the same thing as, uh, as the just ran with the, uh, with the option for the quarterback to pitch the ball to the running back. Second down three. Three receivers to the left for Sean Shelton. The quarterback going to the left. Sabo Platzkova gets a new first down and he's uh, pulled down by number six, Ray Finson. That time was all Swedish uh, pronunciation. Yeah, it actually did. I thought that was like, well, are you Swedish? But I know you're not. I'm most definitely not. But the Raiders moved quickly. Three plays and they're already at the 20 yard line. Yeah, but that was the emphasis uh, for, for the Raiders team was come out of the gate swinging. Person 10, Shelton going to the right, oh. finding Sandro Platzkoma. And he's got a new first down, I think. He's going to be right on that line at least. Yeah, and probably more. There's five on the play on this one. But a good block by uh, by the outside receiver. I didn't catch the, the number, I'm sorry. I think they're calling a horse collar tackle on this one. I don't know. Let me see. But that was an impressive uh, receiver screen they just ran there. Absolutely. Good blocking. On this. Wow. So we actually have the offensive guy doing the face mask on the defensive guy. That's not that's not normal. Uh, this is a good break for the Copenhagen Towers. First and fifteen. Going to the left again with this receiver screen, Sandro Platzmeier. Platzguma, sorry. Gets almost to a new first down. Raiders play lying on the field. That was exactly the same play as they ran before, just on the other side of the, of the, of the field. That's uh, number 80, Fabian Atpalta. Who's hurting? Yeah, Fabian Apfel, uh, one of the better receivers for the for the Raiders, played a great game against Cox Rams. But was this uh, correct me if I'm wrong? But was this the third time in a row they did the basically exact same play, only switching from uh, from right to left? Yeah, it was. It was. Don't often you see that. No, but it, I think they probably saw something uh, during the, the, the first and, and the second quarter from the towers that will open this screen pass up. It could be, for example, that the outside linebacker is, is more to the inside and the safety is, is further downfield. So they, they have this big bubble where they can run it. So it's easy yards, easy picking for the Raiders. So when the towers they run this, as you, uh, you can't see it on the, on here, but now you can see it. The, the towers they run this soft defense where they are lined up 10 yards, eight yards from the receivers, which opens up. Them. Oh, Donahue catches oh, that pass! It's a touchdown! Touchdown, Donahue! Great feat by Patrick Donahue. 
This is not an easy catch. He's under a lot of pressure from the DB. Oh yeah, Simon Mack who's played a great for the first and uh, second quarter. He was actually on him. And again, we'll see this uh, kind of odd formation on the extra point. But again, they switch back to the regular extra point, taking formation. And the kick is good. 24 to 7 for the Raiders. Good job by uh, by Adrian Platzkuma on this uh, the snap. So the snap was a bit behind him. He uh, managed to pull it down. And make sure that uh, Thomas Pilchmann could kick in the extra point. Yeah, as you can see, Adrian Platzkuma here in the picture. The 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 other Platzkuma brother. I think the reason why they line up on the, on the extra point in the, the, the field goal formation on that one is actually to get him the ball on a direct snap and then he can run it on the opposite side of where the formation is lined up, yeah, depending on where the defense lines up. Yeah, if the towers aren't uh, very careful, they could be, in, uh, they could be outnumbered uh, in one part of the field. And anyway, if, if they get one-on-one uh, -on -one with, uh, uh, with the Adrian Paskova, uh, he's got a very good chance of uh, making these two yards and uh, make it a two-point conversion. Exactly. Thomas Pilchmann ready to kick off the ball. Deep kick. It's going to be fielded by Dayton Wing. Trying to change direction and cut up field, but he kind of slips over a player. It's up. Uh, Trying to make a spin move. Yeah, you got number 22, uh, Lauben Kendall from, from the Raiders do, doing some kind of sliding tackle on Dayton Wynn on this one. But actually, he, it got him down, so it worked. Got the job done. Now, our first down and 10 for the Towers. Ball on the 20 yard line, maybe 21. And we got Dayton Wynn here with the center pulling. A little trap play. Good six yards on this play. So the second down to four. Taking the handoff this time. Shredder going down the middle. Oh, oh strong hands again by number 88. Bringing this ball down, it, that's just incredible. That shows strength and that shows great, great soft hands on this one. And we heard from the from the Raiders before the game that they, they're they very aware of the tight ends on yep. this Cobain Towers team. Fin 2 is, uh, is one of them, definitely. Swing past the Dayton win this time, choosing his speed. Taking up, breaking two tackles, three tackles, and then going down with three defenders hanging on top of them. New first down, and this is a lot better look for the Copenhagen Towers offense. This is what they need if they need, if they want to get back in this game. Now we have in the bottom of the picture here. We got Dayton Win in the slot formation. And that running back is uh, Julia Kanata with Dayton Win the man in the slot. Shoulder sure looking left, he's got a man. As Katorn gets the ball, gets about six yards in this play. Yeah, a little fast hitch route. And these hitch routes are, are, are good when, when the opponents are playing a soft coverage. Second down of three for the Towers. Hand off to Junior Canade. Uh, and losing yards in this play. He it's hesitates on this one. And you can see it, he just stutter steps a little bit in the backfield and then just got got tackled for a loss of down. And you can't stutter, stutter step against uh, this Raiders team. You really need to go full on. So when you see the gap, you need to, to attack it. You can't stutter step. Third down and six. The Towers. Schroeder under pressure. Finding a guy. Oh! oh. 
Yes, he could. Wow, that was spectacular catch by Lance Dorr. That was incredible. That was just like the, the Patrick Donahue uh, touchdown before. Also yeah. with great hands and great feet. Except this wasn't a touchdown, obviously. And it's a new first down for the Towers. This time handoff, straight up the middle. Jimmy Canale. It's about two yards in this play. Oh, I think there's some. Uh, everybody's bucking inside on this one. Everybody's angry. Now we got the emotions in this game. We didn't see that in the first and second quarter, but now we got the emotions out here. Now people are. Sorry, the language pissed off. Now people want to execute. They want to do something. And they're fighting for it. Second down and eight. Short on looking right, going right. He's got a man. Again, great hands on, uh, on Escatol. We've seen some, uh, some better catches, some better hands from the Towers uh, to the start of the second half. Yeah, but we talked about this in the first and second quarter. We, I, I said that they need to get the chemistry right. They get, get, need to get the timing right, and they're doing that. And, and, and when that happens, you can see the offense from the Towers. They're just clicking, and normally they are a machine. Third down three, and the handoff, and again, Kanata loses yards. Ah, uh, there's nothing to do here. You saw number 45 coming in the backfield, Nikolai Melcher, and then number 32, Simon Hosa, the other linebacker coming in and making the tackle. But Junior Kanadi, he needs to just pound this rock. Don't start your step. I, just, <laughs> I said that before, but... First down. Sure is trying this hard time again. Then checking the sideline. I just need to find about six yards for a new first down. Shredo looking left. Oh, oh it's that's a he's, got a he's got an open road to the end zone. Only Randall Shredo has a chance. Oh. He can't catch him. Patrick Donahue playing the uh, cornerback position on this one. And he made the pick six. And I saw that. I'm, uh, I'm sorry to say, but I saw that all the way. He under, like we saw uh, the Copenhagen Towers do, do here before, where they undercut the route. Patrick Donahue, he did the same. He looked at in, he looked in at the quarterback, saw where he was going on this out route, and then undercut the route, and then easy pick six on this one. The great IQ, football IQ by by Patrick Donahue, reading this this uh, this route by I think it was Dayton Wynn on the, on the left sideline here, and reading the pass from Randall Schroeder. But now the, the Towers offense, they need to huddle up and then kind of like forget about this play because they have been moving the ball. They're effective. And while I'm talking, the, the extra point was good. And again, great job by Abba and Platzkuma handling this snap. Again, uh, slightly off, but still a uh, yeah, bad, bad snap, but great athlete. <laughs> So now the Towers, they have to go on the field and then keep on doing what they what they did before. They just need, because they actually got in the rhythm, but just a, yeah, a great play from Patrick Donahue made this, yeah, made this pick six. And they need to keep the energy up. I think that was one of the key differences on this drive we just saw from what we saw in most of the, the first half. The Towers offense seemed to have more energy. They seemed to have more urgency, maybe. Yep. But, but don't underestimate the towers, the soccer Raiders, the powerhouse of Europe, the powerhouse of Europe. That's what they've been hearing for the last two to three weeks. And now they're coming here to their house and they're like, ooh, it's a powerhouse coming. Now they've played a first and second quarter against these guys and they see that these guys are human as well. So now they don't feel intimidated by them anymore. And now they're playing football. So as Pikaman kicks off the ball, Again, they win is returning. Starting down the right sideline, gets blocked and cuts off field. Oh, can he get out of it? Yes, he can. And again, Julian Jones coming down to the 15 yard line. Oh, what a great run by David Wynn. Now, this is why we love this guy here in Copenhagen. He is the human joystick. He has such great balance. Yeah. It's one of the key elements of his game. 
Even though he's contacted, even though he makes his, all these cuts, these jukes, these spin moves even, he's always in great balance. Yeah, but you're right on the money on that one, because it's the balance. When what, He gets hit, and he just more or less just adjusts to it, and then keeps on running, keeps on trucking. First and ten from midfield. Schroeder, looking right under that pressure. Ball. Just, just throws it away. Exactly. And that was very good, because you got number 90, and you got number 32, Maximilian Wild and Simon Hosa, just bearing down on Randy Schroeder. Second and ten. Again, the hard gap. And Brent, the, the towers, don't they realistically need to score on basically every dive from yep. there on out? Yeah, here yes, they do. Screen, uh, sorry, draw run from the uh, towers, but it's sniffed out by the Raiders' defense. Good job by the defensive line. A very late flag on this one. It was in the way down in the, the Raiders' backfield. That the yeah, it was called by the back judge. Yeah. It must be on the Raiders, but let's see. So Enrique Martini from the Raiders, number 11, made an unsportsmanlike conduct and a penalty of 15 yards and an automatic first down. The German just cost his team 15 yards. That's uh, yeah. not a good thing. So it's a first down and 10 for the Towers. Three receivers to the left for Randy Schroeder. Schroeder looking left, going left. Close. Mm -hmm. Matt Donnie, you wanted that ball. Yeah, he wanted that one again. That was very, very high. A high ball from uh, Randy Schroeder on this one. About three yards in this play. Makes it a uh, second down and seven. Little swing pass. And and double pass. Coming out here. Pass. Stay but he's he's coming in. And he Did he catch it? Yes. What is it? No. There's a flag. There's not. Oh. The ball's caught. No. The ball is caught, but there's no... What are they waiting for? Is it a touchdown or not? Either way... I think he's just short of a touchdown, but the catch is there, but the flag is also... Let's see what the flag is about. Let's see what Frank Rasmussen has to say. Personal foul. Face mask. On the defense, Vincent Müller on the face mask on this one. That's an automatic first down, so that's half the distance to the goal. That's about two inches. Yeah, two inches. <laughs> first and goal for the Towers. Very, very close. Could be just a uh, quarterback key. That's a oh, it's oh, a it's fumble! Who oh. got that one? And now we got the some going for the Towers, and on the two-inch line, they fumbled the ball. It's number 90, Maximilian Wild. And now the flags are just flying everywhere. I think it's some sportsmanlike conduct with the with the spike. Yeah, probably is. But that has to be a mm, kick in the nuts for the Copenhagen Towers. For the Towers. Yeah, especially because. <laughs> what we got here, we got on the mesh point, something went wrong, so, and we saw that earlier in the game in the first quarter where the mesh point, it didn't work, so they fumbled the ball. At that point, that Dayton win, he just pounced on the ball and he got it back, but on this one, no recovery for the Towers. And this is just, ah, uh, man. Yeah, and as we're sitting here and talking about the towers, the, the, the referee, obviously, Maximilian Wild, he did an unsportsmanlike conduct. So that, for, for, from where they, the, the Raiders recovered the ball, they moved half the distance to the goal. 
But now the, the, the tower's offense, they really need to, to speak to one another. Just look each other in the eye, once again say, okay, the pick six, forget about it. And now this fumble, forget about it. We need to keep on driving. Because they've shown they're not afraid of the Raiders now. They need to just go out there and execute. Yeah, Coach Harvey and the, the rest of the offenses, staff, they need to tell the players on the offense that taking away the, tur the turnovers has looked good. It has looked good for the Towers offense. They need to keep that you know, kind of state of mind when they take the field this time. Yeah. First and ten by the Raiders. Keep by Sean Shelton. Tries to jump through. <laughs> Towers player. Yeah, we, saw like a nice we saw the saw the speed option here again on normally a third down and short or a fourth down, but here on a first down. But obviously this is their short yardage play. So they just need to get out of the end zone so they can open up the playbook a little more. So that's why they run, ra ran this uh, speed option. Yeah, short yardage plays are usually also safe yardage plays. Exactly. And they need to get away from the, uh, from the, uh, the goal line. Yeah. Second down, six. Sheldon looking left. Finally, Patrick Donahue can reel it in. Third down and six coming up. And once again, you see on number 24, Simon Mack from the Towers. He was actually on Donahue on this one. But if he was, if he had trailed, he probably would have get, got a pick six in this one. But he played good football, so he was actually in front of the receiver. Yeah. So for playing good, he gets punished. <laughs> and again, off screen, we see the uh, Towers defenders urging the crowd to make some noise. They know this is a crucial third down. Third down and six. Sean Shelton looking left. Looking for Patrick Gagne. Oh, he's on the pressure! He gets he in the Matt end zone! Matt Bogwan, number 95. One of the star players that Peter Happy mentioned before the game. He got in there and did a... I wouldn't say game-changing, but probably a game-changing game sack right here. Um, it could, at, at the very least, be game-saving. I think if the Raiders had scored now, it's game over. Yeah, it right now, be. they still have a chance. It's not, uh, it's not easy, by any means, but they have a chance. But this is a very hard fun. Yeah, because you can actually feel the wind. It's, it's toward the wind, this one. So we expect a high pooch. Oh, it's just a little pooch kick on this one. The ball rolls the right way for a uh, Raiders supporter. Yeah, but it was actually a good, a good uh, punt on this one because they just need to get it out of the end zone, just let it roll, so a, a low kick and then just see what yards you get. Don't give Dayton win a, uh, an opportunity to return this at such a short field. Yeah, and the punt is so close to the back line that he doesn't have uh, the, the, same, uh, the same time as he usually would. Exactly. You know, adjust the ball, make sure that he uh, feels it correctly. He just had to get it off. Oh, actually, we have Casper Strium, the Danish quarterback, in here now. This usually means uh, kind of more of a, a rhythm game, like uh, more uh, shorter routes. It's more of a kind of kind of West Coast quarterback. Yeah, the, 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 the being more of the uh, the big arm guy. Yeah, that's true. We will see more of a short yardage passing now. Second down and seven. Skewn looking left, going left. See this, uh, this kind of more rhythm approach to being a quarterback. And once again, a fast hitch route from Eskatoon. I was getting about five yards in this. Third down and two. Off. Oh, well, he almost bobbled that one. He got a new first down. Dayton win. Again, close to breaking it, but the sheer speed of this Raiders defense just makes sure that he doesn't break it and takes it all the way to the house. This is normally a, a touchdown run for him. When you see him in the Danish leagues and when you see him against the 
There, here you see it again, breaking one tackle in the backfield. And here it's touched, it gets five yards extra after the touch. First down and 10. Again the handoff. It's time to Anton Wittmer. Ends up losing a couple of yards, I think. Just a minute 17 left in this third quarter. Second down and 12. Skew, looking right, going right, gets a man, there's Katon. Stays on his feet and gets a couple extra yards. And goes out of bounds after a first yard as well. Gets a first down, it's closer to the, to the goal, goal line. So, uh, Kasper Skrim in the backfield with Anton Wittmuehl. Hand off Anton Wittmuehl, he stutters. He's pushed back by the Raiders' defensive line. He's not picking up about two yards. This could be the last play of the third quarter. Second down, eight for the home team. Casper Skew looks left to the corner of the end zone. Almost had a man. Over Actually, did have a man. But he had a man. Through. Totally open. Number 82, Jesper Hansen. Also goes by the name Jelle. Ye Jesper Hansen was free on this one, actually, but he he stopped on his route instead of just going through his route. If he would have kept on running, that would have been a touchdown. Third down and eight. And this is absolutely for down territory with the uh, oh yes. towers don't get this. Oh, yes. Let's take the handoff, going to the right. He's got a man wide open. Oh, touchdown, yes, Bob! Hanson! Tight end, Copenhagen Towers. He was just, from the tight end position, he ran an out route, and he was just free. So here in the dying seconds of the third quarter, the Copenhagen Towers gets a touchdown. Here, look at it again. Totally free, he's just standing in the end zone, no defenders near him. Patrick Donahue went inside with his man, Eskatron. And this is great for the game. This is absolutely great for the game. Yeah, the towers are going for two. They, before the touchdown, they were behind with uh, uh, 24 points. So that's three touchdowns and uh, converting two points on each of those, and they're uh, even. Skew under a lot of pressure. Oh, you need to stop this guy or else it's two points. Oh, look at this. Trouble's coming. Patrick Donahue keeps on going. No, my God, what a oh, return. There's a last, oh, so close by the towers. And now we got flags on the play for a block in the back. So this will come back. So Patrick Donahue after a Wow, look at this. Intercepts it, and then just runs, runs, runs. Nobody catches him. You got the offensive linemen out there running to, to catch him, but they can't, obviously. He gets hurt on this play, Patrick Donahue. Oh, he's down. And if uh, there's a, as we can see in the picture, there's some flags flying on the field. If this is on the Raiders, this uh, uh, two-point return conversion, I'm not actually sure what the, uh, the, the official name is. Let's hear oh. During the return, block in the back, number 53, Simon Riedel, linebacker for the, for the Raiders. So the two-point conversion is no good. And that's, that's, no good. that's just too bad because Patrick Donahue, he made a hell of a return on this one. Yeah, he did a great and job it, on this. Yeah. But no matter what, 31 Raiders, 13 Towers. 
Yeah. It's going to be hard for the Towers to come back to this game. Yeah, it will. It will. But as I see it, the, the way the, 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 the Towers are moving the ball on offense, it's not impossible. Because they more or less just willed it downfield. Again, minor mistakes. We got the mesh, bad mesh fumble. We got uh, undercut very, very... That was Patrick Dunhue all the way with the pick six. So it's actually these small things that go uh, not in Tower's favor. So can they, if they can correct those, we got a ball game. Yeah, actually, I have this feeling that, and I know that you can't take away plays, but if you did take away the two uh, turnovers, the Towers have been the best team in the second half. Yeah, yeah, I, I'm, I agree. But I think it comes back to what I said earlier that now the Towers have played these guys, these this Raiders team for two quarters, and kind of like have the feeling now that. Obviously, they're good, but we're not afraid of them anymore. It's not we don't have the respect for them anymore as we did before. Oh, an onside kick once again! And oh, it's oh. It looked like there was a towers player just running past the ball. Yeah, but if that's again football IQ, because you got you got your assignment on this one. You know your assignment is to block the number one or two or three if counting from the inside. You need to block somebody. You're not the one who picks up the ball, and. With the football IQ, you would be running and looking at the ball at the same time. So he just tried to do his assignment instead of just <laughs> going for the ball. Yeah, so maybe not football IQ, but football awareness. Yeah, awareness, yeah. Anyhow, the Raiders are going to start their drive on the Towers 49 yard line. The first and 10. John Shelton signals that to his receivers. Again, the speed option. Shelton elects to keep the ball. Gets a, a, quite a big tackle from uh, number 95, Esma Quad. Gets about three yards in this play. Second down, seven. Yeah, try to imagine that Mas Marquardt actually comes from the defensive tackle position to go come outside to make this tackle for a gain of three yards. That's pretty impressive. Shelton looking left. He's got a man. He's got a man. Oh, very, very close. Patrick Donahue couldn't keep, uh, haul this one in. Daniel Kako coming over for the safety position. And just right through his hands. Right through his hands, yeah. And he's obviously looking at the, uh, at the judges like, eh, pass interference, but nope. No pass interference on that one. That was just just a good play and a bad play. Yeah. The refs keeping their flags in the pocket. Pulls up uh, third down and seven for the Raiders. Now here, focus on the defensive line of the Copenhagen Towers. And they need to... They've been playing a great game, but they need to really, really step up here in fourth quarter to get the towers back. Show under pressure. Under pressure, yeah. See, that's why you need the pressure on, on the, uh, sorry, uh, uh, Sean Shelton, sorry. Uh, he, he's, they shouldn't allow him to stand in the pocket and give him time to, to survey the field, because then he'll just rip the towers apart. Punting in it for the Raiders, just for the second time in this game, if I'm not uh, mistaken. A very impressive feat in itself. Time is up. They want to let the bounce and roll out of bounds around the eight yard line, I think. Yeah, cornerback Arno Schwarz was down there. So there was no return possibility for Dayton Wynn on this one. But a very bad field position for the Towers. Yeah, they've got a long way to go for the touchdown. First and ten for the Towers. Quick pass to the left, Marcus Bennett steps out of bounds. And once again, we have the Danish quarterback, Casper Struhm, in the backfield. 
Benny gets five yards. Makes this a second down and five. Hand off to Angel Gittner. Good job by the Danish running back. Some flag on the play. I think he got just enough for a first down, but uh, it's depending on the flag. Yeah, I think the tower player got too anxious on this one. Let me see. Is it? Personal foul on who? Personal foul. Chop block. Chop block. Number 66 and 53. So Kasper Eis Christensen and Joachim Mountoff Christensen, both of them made an illegal chop block on this one. And this puts the towers back with the back against the wall. Calls, uh, calls up uh, second down 11 on this play. Towers actually got a, a Raiders player to, to jump a little bit. Hand off again to Anton Wiedmer. Oh, he oh, gets out of a tackles. couple of tackles before he's chased down from the back. Oh, ball is loose, ball is loose! Oh, get on it, someone get on it. Ooh. I think it's going to be a Towers ball. Yeah, I think so too. I actually think that number three, Marcus Pena, got one. Look at the ball here. It's out. Close to a Raiders ball. And. Wow. Actually, I think if. Yeah, Marcus Pena has control of the ball and is out of bounds on this one. And that's actually why they call it the Towers. Ball instead of the Raiders ball. Had it been, has, was this on the field? It was. A, would have been a Raiders ball. Third down for the Towers. Going down deep to the left. Marcus 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 no! So close to that Marcus Bennett. That was so close, and Marcus Bennett hits the ground. It's just uh, he doesn't like that, obviously, because that just fell through his hands. Great pass by Captain Skewum. Yeah, that was deep down the left sideline. That was a perfect catch, uh, ca pass, sorry, perfect pass, but, oi. And of course, when we say that uh, Kasper Skium is primarily a rhythm quarterback, it's kind of West Coast quarterback, he throws the bomb down the left sideline. Yeah, that's the commentator's curse. Come by the Towers. And makes a good Towers jump. Tyler Donahue was close to, uh, to getting his hands on that ball. And ends up being down by the Towers. Right around the 46 yard line of the Raiders. And as you asked before, that do the Towers need to score on every drive? And they're, they're obviously, yes, they do. And now the next question would be, do the Towers need to stop them on this drive? Obviously. And obviously, obviously. Obviously. First and ten. So Lucas going in motion. Shelton looking to the left. Goes down the middle. Incomplete. The right of sideline want a flag on this play for a pass interference. This is actually, this is good uh, of the referees because he ran into the defender. Donahue ran into the defender. The defender didn't run into him. So it's not a pass interference. So actually good call, good non-call from the referees. Just an incomplete pass, which makes this a second down and 10. Here the home team crowd is still in the game, cheering on for the defense. And we got probably a delay of game on this one as well for the back judge calling signal. Yeah. 
See, that's the problem with the motions. If you don't line up fast and you don't run the play fast, this is what you this is this this is what you get. Delay of game. So instead of a second down and ten, we've got a second down and fifteen for the visiting Austrians, the Raiders. To the left, and he once. is oh, all under pressure. pressure behind. But he gets the ball off to Patrick Donahue. Yeah, and outside linebacker Sve Finson comes down to make the, the tackle on this one. Gets nine yards in this play. But did you see how uh, how much time he had in the pocket? Yes, so, so much time. That is the the strength, as I, s I said earlier, for this uh, this uh, Raiders team. They have a great O line. And the, the battle today is, as I've seen it, is in the trenches. It's the Towers D line against the, the, the Raiders O line. Third down and six. Down a man in motion. Faking the handoff to the motion man. Oh, he's got through the first lines of defense. Sean Sheldon, again with the running ability, gets his team a new first down. Yeah, we see here, he just runs and then safety, Marcus Pitch comes down here and actually he, he wraps him up, but he gets plus yards after contact. So that means he's actually a strong runner. New first and 10 for the Raiders. Going to the left, quick pass to Patrick Donahue. Five steps a couple of defenders before he steps out of bounds. And you have this, uh, you have this, uh, um, as I told, as, as I said before, you have the towers with the, the quick passing, the quick slants and the, the quick hitch routes. And now the, the, the Raiders are doing the same thing. Quick, quick passing, quick slant, uh, quick uh, hitch plays. And that's a product of a safety uh, cornerback being 10 yards off. Handoff on this play to number 25 to Bonatti. Yeah, and that's Makwa for the Copenhagen Towers. He wraps him up and just follows him to the backfield. So now a third, no, fourth. What, 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 what? They mark it as the first down. So first down and 10 for the Raiders. Okay, now there's some miscommunication. Very well, it's been ruled a first down on the field, so a first down it is. Got a man in motion, this time Patrick Donahue, taking the handoff. Donahue ends up getting on, on the pitch, caught from behind by, once again, Matt Marquardt. from the defensive tackle position, comes out three yards from the, from the sideline and makes a tackle. He's such an active player from his uh, position. As he a has line. a motor in him, like you won't believe. He just, every play, every down, he just goes full throttle, full throttle. He never takes a break. He never takes a time off. But we've actually, uh, this game, I think we've seen him mostly on this kind of uh, chasing down plays. He hasn't had the impact on the offensive line, the Raiders offensive line, that, that they, the Towers could have wanted out of him. Exactly. He had this one sack early in the game, but other than that, but, but that's because this offensive line is so huge and so talented, so it's difficult to get through. I think oh, that's that, a face mask. That's a face mask. That's very, obvious. very obvious on the on the camera here. And now we've been <laughs> praising uh, Mas Marquardt, and now he makes this tackle and just grabs a hold of the face mask. Again, but as you can see on, the as you can see on the on the on the pictures, it wasn't intentional, but it just. Face mask is a face mask. So it's half the distance to go, but more importantly for the Raiders, it's an automatic first down. It's a personal foul. Yeah, and now with the seven minutes and 33 seconds left of this super final number one, the deficit is really, really taking its toll on the towers because they really need to pull up a rapid now to win this game. First and goal from the 10 yard line. Again, the keep until uh, Sean Shelton passes it to 
Salutați că vă Almost in the end, so there's a flag on the play. He's out of bounds, yeah, but a, a flag on the play, as you said. Man, we can't see what it is. Let's see what the refs agree on. Ah, okay. So uh, holding on Lucas Fink, uh, the, uh, the receiver of the Raiders. Ten-yard penalty pushes him out to the 20-yard line, I think. There's nothing new in that, because normally you got the receivers, when they're out blocking, they, they're not used to blocking, so a, a, a holding penalty is, is common. Absolutely. The Raiders didn't get pushed out to the 20, it's just outside the 10 yards. But still the first down first. goal. Still first and goal, yeah. Shelton looking great. He's got a man. Good tackle, but great balance by Sandro Platzmüller. Platzguma, of course. Uh, you just had to say a great tackle. That was just a bad, bad tackle. He didn't. We we spoke about the towers making re very very good form tackles during the game. We wrap up and then let the next man come and finish it off. But here he just went downhill, just tried to shoot the shoes off Pat Schumer, and he's too big of a player to do that. So you need to wrap up, and he didn't. And you see what happened. Touchdown. But an amazing play by Pat Schumer, just keeping the balance and then getting in. It seemed to be blocked this one, but actually it just got <laughs> just sneaked sneaks through from Thomas Pikeman. Thirty-eight to thirteen, Grant. Yeah, this game is uh, over. Yes, now. Obviously, it's not over. Uh, but I, I I hear I hear the question. I know what you're where, 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 where you're going. It's going to be a long, long game for the Towers to come back in this game. Uh, but, and, and unfortunately for the Towers, that game isn't that long. We got seven minutes left, and I don't think they can make it. So I'm not going to call the, the, the Raiders the, t the winner of the Super Final one yet, but we're getting there. It's going to be an uphill climb for the Towers, because this Swaco Raiders team, they have produced on every level and more. They have just wheeled the ball downfield, they've played very good special teams, they've played very good defense and offense, so everything is clicking for them, and then the Towers, they still have the miscommunication, so... Thomas Pickelman with yet another kickoff. Good one, very deep. They can win with the return. Tries to get out the right sideline and get out of bounds about the 22-yard line. Actually, correct it was Anton Dittner returning the ball. Dittner, right? But it's a, it's a hair that gets us. It's a hair. It's a hair. They're both long-haired guys, and they have the, kind of the same body frame, actually. Yeah, I think uh, Dittner is a bit, uh, just a smidge taller. I remember when uh, when Dayton Wynn came to Copenhagen Towers last year, I thought, why are you bringing in a Dayton Wynn that body size and speed and agility looks as much as Anton Wittner as, as he does. And, yeah, that's all why. Swing Junior Panada with the ball and the swing pass. This is a lot better. Seeing the hole and getting hurt. Good, uh, good, good forming to the ball. Yeah, good, but good decisions from Junior Panada on this one. Unfortunately, it's uh, Raiders Play it down in the field. Without name dropping or saying anything, it looked like number 32, Simon Hosa. But I'm not sure we'll get back on that one. So with uh, 6 minutes 53 seconds left, 
Who's made really uh, biggest impression on you, player-wise? I would say Mas Marquardt, number 95 from the Copenhagen Towers, uh, is by far the, the defensive MVP of this game. And uh, on the Raiders side of the ball, I would say Sandro Platzkuma. He has just been amazing as a runner, as a catcher, as just a, a, a player. So Sandro Platzkuma and uh, Mas Marquardt. I would say are the two best players for each team. I think if, uh, if Sandro Pascuma hadn't uh, scored the last touchdown, I would be leaning towards uh, Patrick Donahue. He's Ooh. been uh, very good this game. Started off, uh, Sandro Pascuma started off very hot in the first half. But uh, Patrick Donahue has played a very good game. Yeah, he started in the second quarter, and then so I would still say Pascuma from, from, from start to finish. Second down for the Towers. Pass to Junior Canade, but very good recovery by number 22 of the Raiders, Lauren Kendall. Yeah, he comes from the, from the linebacker position, actually following uh, uh, Junior Canade out on this swing route and just, just watch the ball down. Let's, uh, we've talked about football IQ and football awareness. If you can't make the interception, do as uh, Kendall does here. Just uh, uh, smash the ball. Down. down. Third down for the Towers, about seven yards. High pass, almost big off. Yeah, you saw uh, Maximilian Wild, number 90, for, uh, for the Raiders. He was just through the line and in the face of Casper Skrium. And when Skrium doesn't have the, 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 the calm in the pocket, he makes these back foot throws on his heel and they normally just sail away and they, it, that's what happened on this one. That was more of an interception than anything else. Fourth down, they need this one. Marcus Bennett can't pull it in. Yeah, it's a turnover and down. I would say this was thrown on the inside shoulder of the receiver and he had this stay route. Uh, not a stay route, but a, a comeback route, a hitch route. And you need to place that on the outside shoulder, because if you place it on the inside shoulder, it could be an interception. If it's on the outside shoulder, it's either a completion or an, uh, or an incomplete pass, because it goes out of bounds. It just looked like a miscommunication, as we've talked about. Uh, as you said, uh, Michael Spenner wanted to, to break outside, and uh, Skum uh, tried to throw a ball inside, so uh, maybe... Uh, Misunderstanding between the two. First down 10 for the Raiders after the turnover and downs. Looks to the right, finds Patrick Donahue. He's really got an arm, this Sean Shelton. He can really sling it. <laughs> he is impressive. There's so much oof, as I think you said uh, the last time we broadcast a game together. Exactly. He's got oof. But he's got this wow factor. Uh, Donahue in the uh, in the picture now, as you called uh, your offensive MVP, and then we got uh, Donahue. Uh, no, sorry, we got uh, uh, Sean Shelton. He's just an athlete, as you can see here. He had uh, he had Sverre Finson right in his face, and more or less just took a stutter step back and then tried to get the ball out to Patskuma, but obviously he couldn't because he was under pressure. But he is just a natural athlete and a very, very good running quarterback as well. Yeah, this is a good play by Sverre Finson. Yeah. It's very, very important that he doesn't, you know, uh, open up for either or. Yeah. He, he kind of takes away both the, the running from the, uh, from the running, uh, from quarterback, sorry. Uh, as well as the pass, uh, uh, kind of down the field. The only option Sean Sheldon had was this uh, Aaron pass to the left. Again, Sheldon looking to the left, right through the arms, actually, of the receiver. That just, I'm sorry to say, but Daniel Sauer on this one, that just looked silly. <laughs> he was just open, and yeah, I don't know. Let's see here on the recap. I'm sorry to call you silly, but uh, this is why. He was just a little bit overthrown. He heard the defensive safety coming in, so he probably just, yeah. Next play, let's go on, sorry. Fourth down and Thomas Pichelmann is ready to attempt another field goal. But this is actually a great start for the Copenhagen Towers that they managed to, to hold them to a potential three points. And it looks good from where I'm sitting. And it is 
Three more points for the Raiders. But there's a flag on the play. Hang on. Hang on. The Raiders team are pointing towards the towers. If this is any kind of defense at all, it's a first down. No. Roughing the snapper. Personal foul, automatic first down. That, in a first down anyway. That is just a. Uh, that's a. Yeah, I don't. I didn't see the play, so it's hard for me to call it. But I would say if you're roughing the snapper, you know as a football player you're not allowed to touch, touch the long snapper. And if you do that, that's just bad football. I'm sorry to say. First and goal from the nine yard line. And this is the nail in the coffin for the Copenhagen Towers. Absolutely. Sandro Klatskuma in motion. Gets the ball on the pass. And this is a good oh tackle. Oh my god, what was that? That was Sverre Finson, number six, outside linebacker for the Copenhagen Towers. He, he just shed his block and then got in the backfield and put the. Uh, got. Uh, Sandro Platschkuma on the turf for a loss of down. Second down and goal, this time from the 12-yard line. And when I said loss of down, I meant obviously loss of yards. We understand. Good, thank you. I'm very impressed by the crowd. They're still uh, cheering for the towers. Uh, serving the field, looking downfield, everything is closed, and he runs the ball himself and runs out of bounds. This is, uh, well, obviously the, this is a sack, but this, this is just very good coverage by the Towers. Taking, taking away all the options for Sean Shelton, but uh, forcing him to, to keep the ball. Exactly, right. but the first time they did that, what happened? He scored a touchdown, so <laughs> they need to put a spy on him uh, so he's not able to do this, because they have great coverage downfield. But obviously, if he can run for himself and then get positive yards, then it's, it's a very long day for the Towers. And as you can see, it has been. Third down and goal. Six yards to go. Shelton looking left. Ball is tipped, but it's caught. It's caught by number 10, Patrick Donahue. Here, see it again. Oh. Mm. Yeah, okay, that's just incredible. He high points this ball and then just tucks it in and then rolls around and then goes for the touchdown and gets it. And your uh, offensive MVP uh, candidate here, he, he is Patrick Gunninghue, he's really bowling for it. So with a pick six and a touchdown now and whatever, yeah, it's... Yeah, he's a uh, third touchdown on, on the day, Patrick yeah. Gunninghue. And? And Thomas another Pichelon. flag on the play. Pingleman makes the kick. Let's see if, uh, if the flag will negate that. As you can see here, 93, he was called for the offside, and he's angry. He doesn't like that. He was called for it, and he, <laughs> he turns around and yells at the judge like, no, it was 33, and he's not happy. And obviously, he, he puts the, the team on his shoulder in the, at, at this point of the game. And, and he played, I know Christopher Boehm, he normally plays with passion. So a, a beating like this, in a great game like this, it, it's just frustrating for a, a team player like he is. But I'm wondering if, if this mentality that they, they're coming with now with the frustration and the yelling and the, oh, let's go, is, is it too late for in the game? Should they have done this in the first quarter to get back in it? Because obviously now it's too late. There's no debate about that. But they probably should have found, found that early on in the game. Take off to a left. Turned by Anton Wittner, number 28, a running back. Caught at the 15-yard line, and I agree with you, uh, Gun. I think the this uh, 
It's kind of fire in some way. Yeah. We should have seen this earlier. Exactly. Yeah. I don't know that, you know, just complaining and uh, moaning, that's, that's no good. That's but not good. what we saw from, uh, from Christophe Bourne earlier, it's, it's pure passion. It's passion. It's, I wanted to see that earlier. Yeah, it's frustration and it's, I'm angry that, listen, this is just, this is beneath us. us. This is not the way we play, so this is frustration, like, come on, let's, let's, go, let's go get this. But now, too late. Casper Steele with a quick pass to the right. Almost intercepted. Again, so incomplete. Second down and ten. Take the handoff, set up the receiver screen. Yeah, but it's difficult because they leave uh, number 20, Pat Patrick Pilka, they leave him open on, the, on this screen. And if he doesn't cut it inside, Patrick Pilka is just standing there waiting for the tackle and he cuts it outside and then, yeah, obviously Patrick Pilka makes the tackle. Still down looking down the, the field for the fly route. Oh, it's a car! Oh, Did he get his feet in bounds? Hands. The ref was not in yes. Oh my God, this is the quality player that the Towers had last year in Eskatrol. He made these plays just like every other play. Look at the, look at the hands on this one. And look at, the, look at the eyes tracking the ball over the shoulder. Exactly. Beautiful. That was just amazing receiver work. But that's my favorite play in American football. This, yeah. The deep pass when you can see the receiver tracking the ball all the way, all the way into his hands. Yeah, tracking up. and adjusting to the ball and then looking it in. That was just an amazing play. And as the Tolan's goal for this game was 100 yards and a touchdown, so now he only needs the touchdown. Once again on this hitch route. Now he's, you can't see it on the field, but he's trash talking the, uh, the cornerback on this one. But again, the deep ball from uh, Casper Spearum. Maybe he hurts and uh, he's mad. He's bad. I can't throw the deep ball? Well, screw you guys. But that's what he needs to do. He's, he's great, as we know, he's great at the rhythm passing with the short pass yardage. And then obviously the, the, the Raiders have to adjust to it and then they have to play a harder coverage. And then that leaves the speed downfield for, for the fly route, as we just saw here. So if they creep up, it opens up the, yeah, the long balls, or the deep balls, I would say, long balls. That, that didn't sound right. I apologize for that one. Raiders players uh, walking off a little gingerly. Yeah, number 56, jo Johannes Sattler from the defensive line. Second down and four. Skew takes the snap, looks to the left. Again finds his man and it, again it says the four. And a new first down. And out of bounds so to stop the clock. This has been a pretty good connection. Casper uh, Skew to the uh, four. And they have been playing together for many, many, many years. So they know each other. They got the chemistry. Again. Skew looking to the left, looking to the right under pressure. And now he has tries to take off. And he got hit in the back on that one. He gets positive yards and he's up again, so no problem on that one. This when I saw this, when he started running, I got the the uh oh, not again. Because uh, look at here, he gets hit in the back. But 
not hard enough to keep him down, so he's up again. Second down and seven, hand off to Dayton Wynn, cuts it upfield. Gets about three yards. The Raiders defense have been very good at bottling up Dayton Wynn. Oh yeah, they, obviously as we spoke to uh, co Coach Shuan Fatah, he knows the, the Copenhagen Towers. He's been scouting these guys and he knows that Dayton Wynn is the bread and butter of the offense for the Copenhagen Towers. So keep him under wraps and you will have a game. Oh, and that's the deep pass, and that's the touchdown! That's the full opening of towers! And he got the touchdown that you talked about. So he the, he can check off his ambition for the game, which was 100 yards and a touchdown. Look at it again. Oh, the great hands. And actually, the Raiders defender had his hands, the hand placement in the right, in, in, the right hand placement inside the arms of Eskatron, but he just, he's a very, very strong receiver, so he just pulls this one in. And but not to can... take anything away from, from this great, great, great catch from Eskatron, but we're in the sensation of too little, too late, because, yeah. With the 25 deficit, it's... It is a little too late, uh, but still, it's a better way to end the game than to be just pummeled and blown out. It may, exactly, but no matter how, no matter what, I've spoke, this is not from the from the players, and this is not from the coaches, but from a lot of people here in Denmark associated with football. No, they're saying no matter what happens, this is a great, great sensation. This is a great victory for the Copenhagen Towers to get this far because this is international level and for them to be playing as as well as they have at least the, the, the last couple of uh, quarters it's a victory no matter what to have the, a game of this size in Denmark great for football in Europe great so everything today is a win See again, the uh, onside kick from the towers. The Raiders were ready for it. They had 10 guys uh, at around uh, 10 to 15 yards from the ball. So they knew it was coming. Yeah, obviously at this point they need to go if, uh, all out. Because if they had got this ball and went down and scored with the two minutes left, then obviously we're closer. And so it could happen in any given Sunday. Uh, and now it's Saturday, but <laughs> you know what I mean. First down and 10. So now we're in a pick six. The Raiders. Wishing list. Hand off down the middle. And you can see that uh, number three, Ruben Seba, is in a quarterback for the Raiders. Yeah, there's no reason for, for Sean Shelton to stay in this game to get hurt for something stupid. So. Obviously, they put in their their uh, Ruben Seba, the backup quarterback. But listen to the crowd. Yeah. This means a lot. As you, as you just said, getting to this game and uh, getting it uh, getting to play it in Denmark is huge. It is. Second down and nine. Keeps the ball. Pitch. Oh, no, oh this is loose. And I think it's Towers. Well, let's call it any given Saturday. Exactly. Here you see fumbling the ball, number 84. Nitzlada. I'm very sorry. No, Nitzlada. Nitzlada. Perfect. Fumbles the ball and the Towers recover. Minute 43 seconds to go. It looked like a running back pass for just a second. Dane Lynn ends up losing yards. Yeah, it's and a flag on the play. Defense. Yeah, but there's a flag on the play earlier, so. And we see here, uh, one guy on him, still positive yards. Three guys, four guys. Four guys on him to bring him down. And a fifth coming and piling on. 
But it's a holding. Holding. On the offense. Oh, we actually got Philip Toon. On a holding. Tight end on a holding. That's not good. So that's a 10 yard penalty, making it first and 20 for the Danish team. If you look at the defensive backs from the Raiders, it's okay to give the towers a couple of yards. They yeah, line yeah. up very far from the receivers. Oh, Kasper Skirm running it. Yeah, I thought he had a lane to run in, but the defensive line just came out of nowhere. When you, if that you're, was uh, You see here Fabian Eger just wrapping him up. And Tobias Uhl coming in to make the final tackle on him. And you see in here the names now, it's not nothing we called earlier, so the the backup for the Svako Raiders are on the field at the moment. Uh, you couldn't see this, but we saw it from here on the sideline. The head coach, Shuan Fatah, just got water from his guys. Oh. Sideline, look at the sideline. Oh, there uh, is. Oh, he's trying to get away. Again, the running back pass from Dayton Wynn. Dayton Wynn running back the pass field. to Eskitol. Intercepted, Intercepted by Patrick Donahue. And this is the nail in the coffin for the Copenhagen Towers. And more or less, a new first down, and the uh, Raiders can kneel this one out. I think I don't think they need the first down. I think, it's, uh, I think the Towers are just going to accept that this game's over. Yeah, probably are. But no matter what, this has been, as we talked about just before, this has been an awesome experience for football Denmark to have a powerhouse like the Svako Raiders coming in here and playing this historical game, the first super final ever here in Gentofte Stadium in Denmark. Hopefully one of many. And it's so, been an absolute pleasure having the Swaka Raiders here. I mean, it, it has been. They have been a great team. They have been great guests. We have had a lot of... We have, uh, here, yeah, what am I saying? Here on the... You can't see it on, if, on the side of us, but we have a lot of uh, uh, guests in the house. What, 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 get, Guests. Audience? Audience. Spectators. Hey, spectators. Audience. Audience. <laughs> I, I lost the words here. <laughs> but thanks for watching and congratulations to the Svako Raiders for winning the first super final here in Europe. The one, the first of many. It has been an absolute pleasure. And obviously we have to pronounce the winner of today's game with Towers versus the Raiders. Obviously we know who the winner of is, but now the MVP for the Copenhagen Towers is number 88, Philip Chu Nielsen. He proved to be a big target for both uh, both uh, Ryan Schroeder and Kasper Skum. That de game. Definitely, he is a remarkable player and as he showed in this game, he has great, great hands and he is over two meters tall, and so he can really, really high point this this ball. It was a prototypical tight end. And now the MVP for the Svako Raiders, number seven, Sandro Patskuma. And I think I called that one. Did you did absolutely. And good, good job. Yeah, but I'm, I'll call you Tony Robo next time. I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm sure to do that. But just to be fair, Patrick Donahue played a hell of a game, but. 
But Simon Platschkuma, he came out in the first quarter and he just kept on trucking to, through the fourth quarter. Yeah, he so, hit the ground running, absolutely. Yeah. But played, played a great game. Vi starter med søndagen til Kogan Charles. Se din Anders Bits, tak for at være på Anders Charles. And obviously the silver medal to the Copenhagen Towers and the trophy for the second place. And the Towers can be very proud of this result. Yeah, they, they can. Normally you get medals, but in this, in this tournament you don't get the medals, uh, at least not here. So you get the trophy with the second place. And as you can see here in the picture, uh, with the Smako Raiders getting their first place. And to grab that trophy is Philip Magreta, linebacker number 36. Yeah, one of the players that we were told to, to keep an extra keen eye on.